I've attempted to make the most detailed Nico guide in existence, with over 2,000 clips, 50 combos, 40 matchups, and every mind trick you can imagine. Welcome to this Nico Ultimate Guide for Season 13. I'm Zeus, and I've put as much information in this guide to help you emulate the best Nico Pro and Solo Queue player builds and gameplay. This guide contains everything you need to dominate and reach your goal this season, and here's a quick preview of what to expect. In the Abilities section, I'll quickly cover what her abilities do, then mention tips and tricks after each one to instantly give you an advantage in your next game. The Build section contains 7 full cheat sheets that you can use right now in your next game. We'll then cover all optimal items, runes, and summoner spells for every situation. There's even an AD on hit build. The Combo section is where things start to get spicy. You'll learn how to deal optimal damage and outplay your enemies. There will be animations on screen to guide you, and then rank gameplay footage of these combos in action. In Mechanics, we'll go deep into Nico's kit, covering special interactions with each of her abilities, so you can have the edge over your opponents. I've even included an extra part called Mind Games, specifically for Nico's disguise and cloning abilities. We'll look into effective techniques to outsmart your opponents through deception, baiting, juking, and more. Gameplay contains strategy to play Nico at every stage of the game, including tips on laning, options whether you're ahead or behind, and team fighting scenarios. Matchups include over 40 different mid champs with information on how to counter these champs, item purchases, power spikes, and special interactions you can abuse to give you an edge. In strengths and weaknesses, we'll look over why you want to play Nico over other champions, and then solutions to combat weaknesses. Since Nico's kit is so versatile, I'll even cover three other roles where she's viable, which is top lane, ADC, and support. There's a full list of timestamps and details in the description. Remember to save this video to a playlist or bookmark it so you can come back to certain parts whenever it's convenient for you. Nico's unique playstyle feels like a safe poke mage, yet she has the potential to go all in and CC the entire enemy team with plenty of tricks up her sleeve. She's become one of my favorite AP mids, so I've tried to cover everything possible about this chameleon trickster. I'm Zeus, and if you enjoyed this guide, be sure to subscribe, as there'll be plenty more coming this season. In this section, I'm going to quickly cover what Nico's abilities do, then after each ability, I will show you tips and tricks to give you an advantage in your next game. So even if you know what the abilities do, you'll still want to watch all of this section. Nico's passive, Inherit Glamour, allows Nico to temporarily transform into any of your allies. You can auto-attack in your allies' form, but you cannot use their abilities. You'll remain in this form until one of the following occurs. You use your Q or E abilities, the second part of your ultimate, take damage from enemy champions, or you transform into another ally, which has a 2.5 second delay before you can transform again. This means you can use auto attacks on enemy champions and your W ability in your disguised form without revealing Nico. This ability is mostly about mind games and as I mentioned before, I included a complete section that explores the potential of this ability, but I'll quickly go over the most common techniques now. You copy your allies HP and resource bar, so use it to bait enemies into thinking you're an easy low HP kill. Appearing on the map as your jungler can give the enemy laners a false sense of security thinking they've just seen your jungler appear mid. You can even fake an invade by appearing as your most fed ally. Just be careful if enemies call your bluff. Try not to transform into any dead allies or right in front of the enemy, as this will make it obvious that you're Nico. You copy your allies' champion's base movement speed stat. While items they purchase won't affect the speed, so it will remain the same the entire game. When walking to lane, transform into the ally which has the highest base movement speed to get to lane slightly faster or even while you're roaming the map. You might even need to use the movement speed to catch an enemy or get away in clutch situations. You will adopt attack range of whichever champion you transform into, however, transforming into a champion that has longer attack range than Nico, for example Caitlyn, will not gain at Caitlyn's attack range. Transforming as a melee champ in lane can make CSing harder, so keep that in mind. Just transform back to Nico or another ranged champion if melee range is too risky. Just for clarity, the purple HP bar is your HP, and the bar above it is your allies. This is what the enemy sees. Using passive doesn't stop your recall, so it may be best to transform during the backing animation into a full HP tank to avoid enemies stopping your back, or perhaps bait enemies by transforming into a low HP ally to start a fight. 
Transform into a melee champ when you're taking tower plates. Plates take 17% reduced damage from ranged units. This will only count for the first 14 minutes of the game. Her W ability also has baiting potential and duking potential that can be used in synergy with this ability and I'll cover that after Q. Her Q, Blooming Burst, is a small AoE skill shot. If it kills an enemy unit or damages a champion or large monster, it will deal extra damage after a short delay. This ability can deal 3 ticks of damage in total with the first dealing the most. Great for AoE damage when enemies are bunched up. This is good for wave clearing. Try to have at least one low HP minion to get extra procs. Ideally you want a very low HP and a medium to low HP minion to ensure you get the 3 blooming burst procs. Use it to take neutral monster camps including blue buffs, dragons and barons since they will trigger the extra procs. Use it to check brushes. If the animation procs again, there's someone in the brush. Most enemies will try to move out of this AoE to take any further damage from the extra procs, so we'll be using CC from E and R, which I'll go over shortly, your ally CC, and even items, to get guaranteed max damage from this ability. Her W, Shape Splitter, has two parts. A passive which empowers every third auto attack for extra damage and grants her some bonus movement speed. This third empowered auto attack scales quite nicely, so remember to weave in orders for optimal damage and trades. I'll cover everything you need to know in combos. Use the movement speed after you use the third empowered auto to stick to your targets, fleeing from threats while kiting, or simply repositioning teamfights. The extra damage proc can be used on towers, which means Nico is effective at taking towers quickly. Her head brightens up when this passive is charged up and ready. If you're transformed however, there is no bright animation above your disguised champion's head, so you can just check above the abilities to see how many stats you have. The second part, the active, allows Nico to become invisible for half a second while sending out a clone of a current form running in the direction you target for 3 seconds. You and the clone gain bonus movement speed. This is effective to get away using the clone as bait. Use it in tight areas will force enemies to possibly chase the clone allowing you to escape. I'll expand on this in the mind game section. The movement speed is great to get away, catch an enemy or reposition in a fight. Use it to bait and absorb enemy abilities as your clone will tank skill shots, targeted abilities, auto attacks and even actives from items. If you're fighting around minions, using the invisibility from this active will drop enemy minion aggro. It can tank up to 2 tower shots which can be useful for a dive and a few other creative plays. The clone is great at checking brushes as well as scouting areas where you lack vision such as Baron and Dragon Pit as it provides the same range of vision that champions have. This active doesn't cost any mana, but it has a long cooldown, around 20 seconds early game, so use it carefully as any time it's on cooldown, you'll be vulnerable to ganks. You can use the movement speed it provides to get to lane slightly faster or when roaming around the map, and it will be off cooldown when you arrive. If you need to use a health pot, use it before you create a clone. If you use a potion right after this ability, the enemy will be able to tell which is the fake Nico, since the real one will have the green healing animation. Use this before an engage to surprise enemies as it synergizes with your ultimate, which I'll follow up on this soon. There will also be plenty of effective techniques in combos. Her E, Tangle Barbs, is a skill shot thrown out in a line, damaging and rooting all enemies it passes through. If it hits at least one enemy, it will become empowered and speed up, increase the root duration and increase the width. It's extremely effective to aim it through minions, especially in laning phase. The increase in speed and width will make it harder for the enemy to dodge and increase the root duration, which allows you to land an easy Q with multiple Q procs. This is best used in teamfights when enemies are bunched up as there's way more chance to activate the empowered E. You can even use the frontline tank as a target to empower your E to hit a target in the backline. You can check brushes with E. If there's a tangle animation, there's an enemy in the brush. Each tangle animation represents a unit. This will be essential to setting up all your damage and generally making plays all game, so check out the combo section where I cover all simple and flash combos. And finally her ultimate, Pop Blossom, is a large AoE ability that shields Nico, stuns enemies and deals damage. It takes just over 1 second to wind up, and even though you jump for around half a second before you land, you can still be hit by enemies. You have an initial shield, plus an extra shield that increases for each enemy champion nearby. It's great for both engaging and disengaging, aiming to hit as many enemies as possible, for not only the massive AoE damage and multiple enemy stun, but the increased shield. You can use abilities 
Flash and Zonya's right before you leap in the air, but not during it. You can wind up your ultimate while disguised as your ally and enemies will not have vision of your ultimate while it's charging. This makes it extremely effective to surprise and deceive enemies. Using the invisibility from W can also help with the surprise factor. Enemies can't see you charge up your ultimate if they don't have vision of you. So use it in brushes or even fog of war, for example, if there's an enemy over a wall. Although her ultimate has insane potential to change the outcome of entire games, the channel and wind up time leaves plenty of room for enemies to react. Therefore, we'll cover every technique and strategy to ensure you increase success rate. There'll be effective techniques in the combo section specifically, but there'll be even more in-depth info in the mechanics and mind game section. As for ability order, for AP builds, Nico's Q is a highest potential damage, wave clear and poke in lane, so max this first. Her E should be max second, as each level will increase the root duration and decrease the cooldown. Her W should be max last, unless you are going AD Nico, but we actually level this first in order to utilize the empowered auto attacks. I'll cover that in the build section, specifically bot and top lane. There are a few other variations with E and Q for the support role, and that will also be covered in the other roles section. And just for clarity, you want to level your ultimate whenever you can, which is level 6, 11, and 16. This section contains all the information you need on runes, items, and summoner spells. I've laid them out in a cheat sheet style with everything you need on one screen, so you can use them in your game right now. But I'll also go into detail to make sure we cover every specific choice. Major runes. Nico is played mostly as a mage, providing plenty of AP damage and great CC. However, she has room for an AD build that makes use of her empowered auto attack on her W's passive. There are four runes for AP, Electric Q, Arcane, First Strike, and Dark Harvest, and two runes for AD, Press the Attack and Lethal Tempo. Let's first cover the four major runes for AP Nico. AP Nico can be played mid, top, bottom, and support. This guide mostly focus on mid lane, but you can check out the section towards the end of this guide for any specific choices that the other roles may need. Electric Q. Let's first cover the most popular and highly effective room for Nico, Electric Q. Hitting a champion with three separate auto attacks or abilities within three seconds deals extra damage. This has become the staple rune for Nico as it complements her poke and burst playstyle. A simple EQ and auto attack procs this damage, which is effective for trades in lane and of course one-shotting squishies later on. Arcane Comment Best taken when you aren't able to consistently get close to proc electrocute, basically champs that outrange you. It has some interesting interactions with Nico. Each proc from Q actually reduces the cooldown of this rune. Your W empowered auto does not reduce the cooldown of this rune. Although the comment can be dodged from Qs, landing your E, ultimate, or even items like Everfrost will guarantee the damage from this rune. First Strike if you can consistently hit the enemy first, you'll gain extra damage and gold every time you trade. This rune scales quite well and rewards Nico for poking and trading all game. Don't take this against matchups or even team comps that outrange and poke you. Dark Harvest, one of the best snowballing runes in League. It deals bonus damage anytime you damage a champion below 50% HP. Additionally, you will harvest their soul, permanently increasing this rune's damage the next time you proc it. This has huge potential to snowball and guarantees an insane late game as you'll seriously blow up any squishies with a full combo. This early game meta makes it a little harder to predict whether this will be useful, so only take it against champions you can confidently poke down. Test this when you're more experienced with Nico. Keystones aka Minor Runes So if you've taken Electrocute or Dark Harvest, pick up Taste of Blood for HP sustain during laning phase and throughout the game. Cheap Shot is viable if you want extra damage. It will proc any time you land E, Ultimate, and the Everfrost item. Pick Eyeball of Collection if you're confident in picking up kills, while Ghost Pora would be the better defensive option for vision it provides. The final minor rune is Treasure Hunter, helping you snowball off early kills. Ultimate Hunter is viable as it will probably be your best bet if you plan to constantly make plays and star fights, reducing the cooldown of your ultimate. Relentless Hunter is another option for the out of combat movement speed. This bonus movement speed can really help Nico engage to close distance and land that important E route, or simply move around the map and make plays. Ingenious Hunter is also viable, especially if you plan to buy items with actives like Zonya's Everfrost and even Protobelt. Arcane Common 
From Sorcery, you want to take Mana Flow Band as your first choice as it helps deal with any mana problems and provides that 1% mana regen once you've reached 10 stacks. Transcendence is a solo choice for the ability haste, helping you spam combos during fights. This has some great snowball potential, but again, you won't really feel its effects until later on. Scorch complements Nico's poke playstyle early, dealing extra damage anytime you land Q and E. If you really plan on dominating early lane, then you'll want to take this. Gathering Storm seems to always deserve a mention, as it's the ultimate late game rune. Although you'll gain massive AP power spikes at later stages, Solar Q can be too hard to predict and therefore makes this an inconsistent rune. First Strike Magical Footwear is a great utility choice, saving you about 300 gold. Nico has decent movement speed buffs from W, so you can generally skip on boots early on. Stopwatch is a defensive option to consider for some game-changing plays early. Only get this if you plan to buy Zonyas later on. For your second choice, Biscuit Delivery is one of the safest early game runes, helping you sustain through any trades and poke. Finally, Cosmic Insight for Summoner Spell Haste and Item Haste, which is very useful for Nico to make plays off her Flash and most of her Mythic items. As for second page options with AP, you can pick any of the previous keystones. Some popular combinations are Mana Flow Band and Scorch, Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery, and Taste of Blood and Treasure Hunter. Others include Presence of Mind and Coup de Gras, and a defensive option, Bone Plating and Overgrowth, which I'll cover soon. AD on Hit Nico. Let's quickly cover how your playstyle should change when using this build. The most obvious change is her damage output. Instead of relying on abilities to do most of your damage, you'll now be relying on your auto attacks to get the job done. Apart from the very early laning phase, your Q will be the least priority ability to focus, especially later on, as any time you waste casting Q, you'll lose damage from your auto attacks. Your E will now become an important pill tool, allowing you to auto attack the rooted victim. However, it's just as effective to catch enemies. Your ultimate use will also have to change in playstyle. Instead of having the mindset to jump into multiple enemies and burst them like AP Nico, you should rather use this as a defensive tool, peeling any enemy threats that get too close. The shield and stun will give you enough time to either get away or auto the stun target. Make sure to still use your passive disguise and W clones, just as you would normally. AD Nico, mid, bot, or top. If you're keen on playing AD Nico as a bot lane carry or top laner, Lethal Tempo and Press the Attack is a viable option for an AD or on-hit build. It can be viable mid, especially against melee champions, where you're able to auto-attack safely from distance, and you'll be able to do more consistent damage without relying on skill shots. Also viable if you want to play AD Nico if your team already has a lot of AP. You want to max W, E, and then Q. Niku can build crit and on-hit items depending on the enemy champions. We'll cover them soon in items. Lethal Tempo. Your attack speed will now increase for 6 seconds when you attack an enemy. It can stack 6 times. When this is fully stacked, you can exceed the attack speed limit and you'll gain 50 attack damage. This has potential to shred anything in your path, as long as you're able to kite and position. Press the attack. After 3 auto attacks in quick succession, enemies become vulnerable and take 8-12% to more damage from all sources for 6 seconds. Since you'll focus on building attack speed, this will be easier to activate as the game progresses. This rune is slightly better early game compared to Lethal Tempo. Minor runes. Triumph for the missing health restore on champion takedowns and small 20 gold reward. Legend Alacrity is the popular second minor rune, as it not only synergizes with this playstyle, it will help proc your empowered W auto attacks, ideally, numerous times in an extended trade or team fight. Finally, Coup de Gras for the increased damage against champions that have less than 40% HP. A quick mention, Overheal may get buffed, so it will be best when you take Blade of the Ruined King first. Cut down if you're up against two or more tanky champions. Again, better with Blade of the Ruined King. As for second page options, you'll want to take Resolve for defensive options. Take Bone Plating for some resistance against burst threats, helping you minimize the initial incoming damage, and Overgrowth for some permanent HP, making you a little tankier. Having you kite and constantly auto attack for damage means you're way more vulnerable compared to AP Nico. Resolve helps alleviate some of that pressure. You can also pick up some tanky items we'll cover soon. As for shards, although most AP champs take adaptive force for the first shard, Niku can actually opt for the attack speed shard, helping you activate your W passive faster. It even synergizes well with runes like electrocute and press the attack. You'll always want to take the attack speed shard with a lethal tempo and press the attack. 
take adaptive force when you can't really get in auto attacks, so best with arcane comment. The second shard is always adaptive force. The third shard is situational, as you want to pick armor or magic resist depending on your laner. Armor is always the default if you're unsure. Items. I'll cover all the AP items first, then all the AD items. Starting items. Doran's Ring plus 2 HP pots. This will provide AP, HP, and mana sustain, and the 2 HP pots offer room to go in for hard trades and recover from poke. A very rare but viable start is Dark Steel with refillable. This is considered a gold efficient start with potential to snowball, but it's also very risky, leaving you in a vulnerable position after heavy poke or trade. Although not recommended as a starting item, the Dark Seal is just a great first back option. All the bonus stats and snowball potential, plus the option to build into Mage Eyes. If you're still confident you can snowball your lane, but you want more pots, just get 3 HP pots and the Dark Seal. Epic items, which are components. Hextech Alternator. This will be one of your main goals early, so aim to reach 1050 gold before you back. This component will be necessary to complete the Hextech Rocket Belt. It provides some extra damage for your combos. Lost Chapter. If you aren't building Rocket Belt, then you'll want to aim for 1300 gold. Mana won't be an issue anymore. This will build into Everfrost and Ludens Tempest. Boots. As a quick mention, you can rush your second tier boots before you finish your Mythic, if you want to prioritize movement speed or any effects the boots provide. Sorcerer Shoes, a very solid choice for Nico, as the flat magic pen helps increase your damage, especially early on. Ionian Boots of Lucidity, a budget option for providing summoner spell haste, which is quite useful for flash plays. Mercury Treads and Plated Steel Caps. I don't really recommend defensive boots on Nico, as you'll lose too much damage and utility compared to the two previous boots. If it's full AP or AD team, then it's a viable choice. Mythic Items. We'll start with the most common mythic item on Nico, and that's Hextech Rocket Belt. It provides AP, HP, and Ability Haste, as well as the important active that allows Nico to dash a short distance, unleashing missiles in an arc, scaling with AP. After the dash, you'll gain 50% movement speed towards enemy champions for 2 seconds. This synergizes quite well with Nico's playstyle, as you'll need to get close and stick to your enemy in order to land an effective E and of course an ultimate on multiple enemies. It becomes very effective against mobile champions that can disengage, providing another way to get close. There's quite a few combos in this item, so check out that section next, for efficient strategies to one-shot and stick to mobile enemies. The second most common mythic is Everfrost. It provides AP, mana, ability haste, and even HP. Its active, Glaciate, deals scaling magic damage in a cone, slowing enemies by 65% for 1.5 seconds, but most importantly, roots enemies in the center, creating possibilities to CC lock even the most mobile enemies. We can use this CC to guarantee multiple procs from our Q, land our E root, and keep enemy CC to land our ultimate. This active counts as a stack towards electrocute, and I'll show you how to effectively use this active in the combo section. Another less common mythic item is Ludens Tempest, providing AP, magic penetration, mana, and ability haste. After landing an ability, its passive, Echo, deals additional damage to the target and three nearby enemies, as well as granting you 50% movement speed for two seconds. Just like Everfrost, it builds from Lost Chapter, so a great item for mana sustaining lane and general freedom to spam abilities without going boom. Although Ludens favors a more poke mage playstyle, Nico usually takes on a playmaking role and that utility is something this item doesn't really provide compared to the two last mythics. However, it does have some bonus movement speed. This item is best when you're ahead, and against squishier champs that aren't so mobile. Leandrius Anguish is the last mythic item built from Lost Chapter. The burn damage this provides is best taken against 3 or more tanks, otherwise stick to the previous 3 mythic items mentioned. Legendary Item Choices Zonya's Hourglass. Not only does this item have a convenient build path with the Seeker's Arm Guard and Stopwatch, it's extremely affordable and counters so many champions, and not just AD champs. It also synergizes with Nico's playstyle, as once you've used all your abilities and find yourself in the middle of the enemy team, you can just activate Zonya's, wait for your cooldowns, and then continue outputting damage. There's a few interactions worth mentioning, and I've added that in the combo section. And by the way, just because it has so many advantages, if you're extremely confident you won't die and there aren't big threats, you can always skip Zonya's. A quick note, since you do have a shield after your ultimate, Zonya's may not be necessary straight away. Instead, wait until your shield is gone, then pop Zonya's. Shadow Flame, a currently strong item that provides AP, HP, and magic penetration. Solid option after your Mythic. Horizon Focus. 
The Hyper Shot passive activates any time you land E or ultimate, amplifying your damage. The massive flat AP this provides will help you one-shot many squishies. For clarity, you can activate this with a max range Q, as well as the Everfrost active. Rabadon's Death Cap, the ultimate late game item for AP champs. Once completed, it will provide a massive power spike, increasing all your AP by 35%. However, it comes at a hefty cost of 3,800. If you're against three to four squishy champs and find yourself snowballing, then this will take advantage of that. Seriously allowing you to burst, one shot, and deal massive amounts of damage in team fights. Void Stuff. This will be the number one choice to counter magic resist. Although usually bought as the fifth or final item, don't hesitate to buy this earlier if you do notice enemies buying MR. Many high elo players actually consider this as a second or third buy, regardless of how the enemy team is building, perhaps for the cheap price and as it counts as another mythic passive. Banshee's Veil, a solid defensive item against AP threats with an extremely useful spell shield that blocks the next enemy ability, which against certain threats could be the difference between winning and losing a teamfight. Magi Soul Stealer, although it's the cheapest legendary in the game, it's pretty risky on a champ like Nico, who needs to position as close to as many enemies as possible. Unless you're really ahead in snowballing, don't take this. Morella Nomicon, this will be necessary against heavy healing comps. If your support has Chemtech, Putrefire, you really don't need this. Nash's Tooth. This has high potential on Nico as long as you can consistently kite and auto attack enemies. Considering she already auto attacks quite heavily in her combos, she makes use of the extra damage on auto attacks quite well. It can even be purchased when playing AD Nico too, for the general attack speed and on hit effects. This synergizes well with the split pushing strategy, and I'll mention tips in gameplay. Lichbane. Considering Nico outputs plenty of damage from her W and powered autos, this synergizes perfectly with her playstyle. Apart from bursting champs, it's an amazing item to split push and take towers. Enemies will be forced to deal with you or risk losing towers extremely fast. Cosmic Drive. This item can synergize well with Nico with the flat stats it provides and movement speed passive to kite enemies. Basically, anytime you land abilities, it provides extra movement speed which scales with AP haste. Demonic Embrace. A damage over time item anytime you land abilities. This is great to purchase anytime the enemy has three or more tanks. It also makes you a little bit tankier, providing flat HP. So AD items, some starting items. Doran Sword plus one HP pot. Provides attack damage, HP, and Omnivamp, allowing for sustain over longer lanes. You want to take this against laners you can consistently auto attack, like melee champs in top lane, or maybe bot lane, where you'll have a support with heals. Longsword plus three HP pots. Against lanes that have plenty of poke, you'll need two extra HP pots to help sustain and keep you healthy. This will build into your mythic item. Some components for AD Nico. One of your first main goals for Nico is Noon Quiver, providing AD attack speed and additional physical damage to minions and monsters. This will be necessary to complete two mythic items, Kraken Slayer and Gale Force. Vampiric Scepter, another item worth mentioning, especially for the life still it provides, building into Blade of the Ruined King. Boots. Berserker Greaves. The increased attack speed makes it effective to activate the lethal tempo and press the attack runes, as well as item passives. So AD or on hit Nico. Kraken Slayer. The first and most popular AD mythic, specifically for AD Nico, is Kraken Slayer. Providing AD, attack speed, crit strike chance, and the bring it down passive, which deals additional true damage every third auto attack, scaling with bonus AD. If you're in a team comp that can peel for you, or the enemy team comp can be easily kited, you will unleash massive amount of consistent damage, shredding everything in your way. Gale Force. And finally, the last AD and Mythic item in general is Gale Force, providing AD attack speed and crit chance. However, it also provides an extremely effective active, Cloud Burst, allowing Nico to dash in a target direction, firing three missiles at the lowest enemy, prioritizing champions. It increases its damage against low HP targets, and this is maximized when they are 30% or lower HP. Apart from the great execute damage, this active has an incredible amount of outplay potential, especially with Nico's kit getting closer to land D or ultimate, or simply using it to escape from any threats. Legendaries. Blade of the Ruined King, AD attack speed and life steal. With the first passive, Mist's Edge, Nico's auto attacks will apply physical on hit damage equal to the target's current health, making it perfect to shred tankier enemies. The second passive, Siphon, after three auto attacks, will deal magic damage based on level and steal movement speed for two seconds, synergizing well with the lethal tempo and press the attack runes, and general kiting playstyle of AD Nico. By the way, you can purchase this first before your Kraken Slayer.
Wit's End, an AP defensive option with another on-hit passive effects, dealing bonus magic damage every auto attack and granting flat movement speed for 2 seconds. Runan's Hurricane, as well as the attack speed, crit chance and move speed, the passive, Wind Fury, fires 2 bolts to nearby enemies, scaling with AD, and these bolts apply on-hit effects and can critically strike. With these items, you'll be way more effective at dealing damage to multiple enemies in teamfights. It synergizes well with your W empowered auto attack as each bolt will count as a charge. This means if there are three enemies within range, you'll always have your empowered auto attack active. However, it will only apply the empowered damage to the main target. Each bolt does not count as a stack towards Kraken and your true damage Kraken auto will only apply to the main target. Gwinsu's Rage Blade. The first passive, Wrath, will convert your critical strike chance to on-hit damage. Basically, you'll gain 40 AD every 20% crit strike. The second passive doubles your on-hit effects every third attack. However, it does not double your W empowered auto attack. Infinity Edge provides AD crit chance and the Perfection passive, increasing your crit strike damage by 35% whenever you have 16% crit strike chance. Phantom Dancer, attack speed, AD, crit strike chance and move speed. The Spectral Waltz passive grants ghosting, allowing you to ignore the collision with other units and more importantly, bonus movement speed percentage for 3 seconds. In addition, you can activate extra attack speed. Bloodthirster, AD crit chance and life steal. The passive Icor Shield allows Nico to overheal from life steal, storing excess health as a shield, scaling with levels. And this decays if you haven't dealt or taken damage in the last 25 seconds. A great defensive option if you want a bit more tankiness. More to reminder, Generally purchase towards the end of your build, or any time you need to prioritize healing reduction. Lord Dominic's Regards, shred through any armor stack tanks. Mercurial Scimitar, a defensive option to remove any CC that has serious threat. Guardian Angel, a lifeline item reviving you any time you lose all your HP. You can actually still get Zonyos on AD Nico if that's more of a reliable defensive option. Ravenous Hunter, a viable item for on-hit Nico if you're looking to deal more AoE damage. A quick re-mention of Nash's, as this is viable with the AD on hit Nico. Mixed damage and hybrid potential. Although you want to stick to the same damage type depending on your build, you could always consider purchasing a different damage type of item if you have a specific need or even adjust to the enemy team's builds and main threats. For example, a defensive AP item like Zonya's is still viable with AD Nico. Elixirs. As for AP Nico, pick up Sorcery anytime you have full build or before a potential final fight of the game. Consider Elixir of Iron in some cases, especially if you have enough damage on your team and have taken on a more utility based role in teamfights. With AD Nico, you can purchase the Elixir of Wrath for the bonus AD and life steal. Summoners. When it comes to summoner spells, Flash is always your first choice, helping Nico escape combo and generally make plays. Ignite. This will be the main tool to secure kills during early laning phase, helping you snowball the game. Taking Ignite shouldn't only be considered just to kill your laner. Sometimes you want to apply pressure early in skirmishes with your jungle, with Ignite providing that extra potential to win those early clutch fights. I'll mention in matchups which specific champs you want to take Ignite against. It even has utility uses like Grievous Wounds, effective to counter healing based champions, and Grant's Vision, something useful when fighting around Fog of War areas. If you simply prefer playing an aggressive playstyle in every matchup, then you can take Ignite every time. TP. Teleport will provide that extra added safety early game, helping you recover from any hard trades or even an early death. You can minimize the impact from an early death by TPing to lane and hopefully staying even or ahead in gold and experience. As well as the safety, it's great for making plays, split pushing, objective plays and backdooring late game. I'll elaborate on these strategies in gameplay. Defensive Summoner Spells Anytime you're up against certain threats, whether it's your laner or another champion on the enemy team, you should consider Summoner Spells as a solid defensive option. Some matchups will mention options, but I'll quickly summarize them now. Exhaust Usually useful against melee champs that have a small window to deal a massive amount of burst damage. By decreasing the damage, you can survive most assassin burst combos, and even use the slow to land your abilities and turn the fight around. Barrier Another useful summoner to withstand burst. Sometimes you want to take this against certain ranged threats that you can't exhaust because they are out of range, for example Syndra. This is slightly better than heal as it can absorb more damage and is resistant to grievous wounds. Makes for great bait plays as well. Ghost, a surprisingly effective rune that feels really smooth on Nico. This increases Nico's ability to ult, kite and escape during fights. Heal, 
This will be taken when you play bot lane carry, either AP or AD. The heal will be effective for you and your support. Remember to use the movement speed if you need to get away or to catch an enemy. Just a quick vision control item mention. Sweeper Lens. Upgrading your trigger to Sweeper will increase your chances to deceive. Remember, when enemies lack vision, they won't see you transform, so they'll lose track of your allies. Therefore, making it harder for them to guess which is the real or clone champion. It will also increase your success rate of surprise ultimate combos. Although Control Ward should be always high priority when you have enough gold, Nico's kit, especially her disguise and cloning abilities, will make extra use of the vision to Nile. Let's quickly cover some interactions before we look at combos. Q range note. Your Q ability will only start to cast once you're within the Q radius range. If you press Q outside of this range, Nika will start to path towards that direction until she is in range and then she will cast it. It's important to get a good feel for the range, otherwise this can feel quite clunky and may even mess up the rhythm for your combos. Empowered E Reminder. As mentioned in abilities, your E increases in width, speed, and perhaps most importantly, root duration, making it very effective when using it through any units, especially minions and champions. Keep this in mind when performing combos, as the increased root duration can be chained to CC the enemy even longer with your ultimate and even the Everfrost active. Empowered W Auto Attacks When Nika has charged up her W Auto Attack, her empowered auto animation has a smaller windup so it basically sends out the auto attack faster than her normal auto attacks. Just make sure you get a good feel for this and be aware of when the next empowered auto is up so you can have a smoother combo. Also, you can use the empowered auto W bonus movement speed to position or get closer to execute your combos and generally kite your enemies. The main poke combo, E then Q. You want to E and if it lands, instantly throw out your Q. Great poke combo that allows you to deal a good chunk of damage from long range, especially if you can't get in range to auto attack. E is best used through minions when using it in lane or through other champions during teamfights. If your E isn't empowered, you'll usually only get two Q procs. If you don't land E root, simply hold onto Q to save mana. Main poke combo two, Q then E. When you are extremely confident you can land your E root, then it may be optimal to use Q first since each Q proc will take just under a second to bloom again. Essentially, you'll need the enemy to stay in your Q AoE for 1.5 seconds after the first Q lands in order to get those two extra procs. This is effective when enemies can't see you and are walking in a predictable path. Main trade combo number one, E, Q, empowered auto attack. Once you hit E, they'll be rooted, allowing you to potentially proc the max damage from Q and even an auto attack. Again, E is best used through minions or enemy champions for a longer route. Charge a W passive before this combo if you can, to proc the empowered auto attack for optimal damage. Guaranteed 3 procs, Q, E, empowered auto. Similar to the previous combo, but this guarantees max damage from Q if you land E. Again, you must be confident you land E, otherwise the enemy will move out of your Q AoE. Add an empowered auto for optimal damage. Quick notes before your first cast of ultimate. There's a few disadvantages of using auto attacks Q and E while you're channeling ultimate. Using any of these slows you down when you really need to position deep and leave the enemy without any escapes. Unless of course you land E, then enemies can't escape. Therefore, once you press R, completely focus on landing it, then follow up with abilities. Okay, full combo close. R, Q, E, empowered auto. This combo assumes you are close enough to the enemy or enemies in order for them to be stunned from your ultimate. Once they are stunned, follow up with Q and right before the stun runs out, use E to further CC them. Continue with auto attacks, making sure to get at least one empowered auto. If you want to surprise enemies with your full combo, make sure to transform, use W, then R while in clone. As mentioned before, enemies won't see the windup of your R while you're transformed, allowing for it deceiving engages. This is a full combo if you need to gap close and you've landed E. E, ultimate, Q, auto attack. Now if you've landed E, ideally you want to land your empowered E from range and you're now ready to move in with your ultimate. Your E may be up after your full combo by the way, depending on your cooldown and if you landed a max duration E, so be ready to use it again. The blast cone, ultimate. Ultimate, then auto attack the blast cone. 
we'll be using the blast code mechanics to knock us up and into enemies. Once you start channeling your ultimate, auto attack the blast code, aiming to be in areas where most enemies are located. You can even attempt to steal epic monsters like barons or dragons by timing this when monsters are low HP. Blast cones are positioned around in very effective spots, mostly in the jungle. Use the empowered blast cones to close even more distance. Invisible wind up. W, then ultimate. Press W, then instantly press R. You'll start channeling your ultimate while invisible, leaving players with less time to react. Add a flash at the end for an even bigger surprise factor. So it would be W, ultimate, then flash. The sneaky ult combo engage. You want to use your passive to disguise, press ultimate, then W. While casting the ultimate in your disguise form, enemies will not see the casting animation around you. Then use your W clone to go invisible, basically leaving enemies with only half a second to react. Add flash at the end to get even deeper areas with multiple enemies nearby. Let's cover Chain CC and discuss whether it's best to start with E root or Ultimate Stun. Just for clarity, in order to Chain CC, you want to time each CC one after the other, just as each one is about to run out. If you simply just throw all your CC at once, aka stacking CC, you'll essentially be wasting that CC duration. When it comes to Chain CC, is it better to start E or Ult? Your ultimate has a bigger chance to land if they are already close to you, and they don't have dashes or blinks or flash up. So if these conditions are met, you want to use your ultimate first, then once enemies are stunned, use Q and auto attacks, then use E just as the ultimate stun duration is timing out. Now if enemies have a dash, blink or flash available, if you use E first, there's still a chance that they get out of your ultimate range once you start channeling it, because the duration of E by itself is not that long. However, if you start channeling ultimate, then land your E route, they'll have no chance of getting out. And finally, the last condition, if you're able to land an empowered E, which will be the most optimal play, enemies will be rooted the entire time while you wind up your ultimate, which will guarantee you land it. Flash combos. Q flash or flash Q. Anytime you want to extend the range of Q to finish off a low HP enemy, you'll almost always want to consider using flash then Q. The simple reason is that if you Q and then flash, but your Q is still out of range, you simply won't cast Q. One advantage of Q flash to consider is while you're in a clutch fight or being chased. You can Q on the enemy close by, then instantly flash away. If enemies are on top of you, the Q travel time will almost be instant. Basically, you'll deal damage to the enemy who's fighting or chasing you, then flash to safety. Surprise flash. W then flash while invisible. You can actually flash while invisible to surprise enemies, whether it's to land another ability or simply auto attack to finish off a low HP enemy. By the way, they can't see the flash animation while you're invisible, so there's a good chance they won't even know you flashed. E flash combo. You want to E, then instantly flash. A simple combo to catch out enemies from quite some distance. Even if you're initially in range with E, but really want to increase your chances, use this combo for an almost guaranteed route. Great when you're receiving a gank or when your team is desperate to make picks. You can add W before this combo using the movement speed to close distance. I'll quickly mention that you can use these combo to reposition, potentially hitting more than one target. This can be hard to pull off, but it is worth mentioning as it has potential for amazing plays. So using the E flash mechanic in a solid pre-6 combo, let's try this reliable root combo. E, flash, Q, empowered auto. After you flash, just use Q on the rooted target and finish with an empowered auto. Great for 1v1 finishes in lane or again, making picks around the map. Surprise E flash. W, E, then flash. Use the invisibility and movement speed to get closer, then just as it's about to run out, E and instantly flash. This is extremely effective to catch enemies by surprise and should be used for important kills. Empowered W auto finisher. Flash, empowered auto, ignite. A lot of players underestimate her damage from your third auto. Charge up your empowered auto, flash, auto attack, and ignite to finish off low HP enemies. Even if you have little to no mana, you can perform this combo. Ultimate, then flash. This combo is useful when you aren't close to enemies and uses flash to close distance. Flash right before the windup, otherwise you won't be allowed to flash and enemies will be out of range. You want to practice this a few times, aiming to flash right before you jump up, indicated by the windup bar. If you flash too early, they'll probably have time to flash or get out. Just practice this a few times in practice mode to get the timing correct. Item combos. Now let's go over some combos that involve items and their special interactions. 
Zonyas. Q, E, auto attack Zonyas. Use the poke combo, then hit Zonyas. Q and E will travel, land, and deal damage while you're in the safety of Zonyas. Highly effective in clutch situations. Ideally, you'll get all three procs of damage from Q. Add Ignite for more kill threat. If you don't have time, don't worry about auto attacking. Zonyas with ultimate. Once you press R, you can use Zonyas early on, at the end of the windup, or after you have landed for extra safety. As already mentioned, you still want to make use of the shield you gain from your ultimate, but if you fear it won't be enough to protect you from damage or CC, don't hesitate to use Zonyas. Rocket Belt. Rocket Belt plus E. Use the damage from Rocket Belt to gap close, then E. Make sure to spam E after Rocket Belt as it will only cast E once the rocket animation is over. Using E then Rocket Belt will not extend the range of E. In some cases, after using the Rocket Belt active, utilize the bonus movement speed to gap close up to 1.5 seconds, then use E. R plus Rocket Belt allows you to gap close before you jump in. Flash is still better for gap closing and surprising enemies, but this combo has a much shorter cooldown. The Auto Attack Cancel Auto Attack, Rocket Belt, Auto Attack. This is a general combo with Rocket Belt that allows you to cancel the auto animation, essentially allowing you to auto attack twice much faster. Basic Massive Gap Closer Flash, Rocket Belt, E. You can seriously catch out enemies from an entire screen away with this combo. However, the tough part will be landing your E. Best used when making a pick on immobile targets or when enemies are grouped up. You can use the movement speed after Rocket Belt to get a little closer, but this will take away from the surprise factor. With a summoner spell like Flash, you never want to waste it on low value kills, so only use it on big bounty threats or if the kill leads to an objective. Massive Gap Closer 2, Rocket Belt E Flash. Same concept as the last combo, but a bigger surprise factor as you'll be utilizing the E Flash combo. Again, you can use the movement speed from Rocket Belt to close any distance for 1.5 seconds before you use E Flash. A Gap Closer Alt Combo. Start this combo disguised as a low threat champion, but this isn't necessary. W, R, Flash, Rocket Belt. Use W towards the area you want to land your ultimate, then while invisible, press R. As already mentioned, it will start channeling the ultimate while invisible, and just about as the first cast is finished, you want to immediately flash, then rocket belt to gap close and engage, preferably on multiple targets. Although the W provides some surprise, you'll almost never want to run straight through vision areas, as many players who anticipate this can flash or dash out. Therefore, it's best when you flank from fog of war, preferably from an angle. Everfrost. Apart from combos I'll cover shortly, you can use this active before any of the previously mentioned combos. The slow and route this provides will increase the chance of landing all your abilities, and you should always aim to chain CC where you can, instead of wasting CC by stacking it. Of course, there'll be moments in games where you just need to output the most damage as possible in the shortest amount of time, so unloading everything at once is completely fine in that situation. Synergy with Q. Everfrost synergizes well with Q, as you'll be able to output all the procs from Q on a rooted target, or even get an extra one proc if you only manage to slow them. Chaining CC. Everfrost with E and R. Use the root from Everfrost to chain CC with either E or Ultimate. If you've missed the Everfrost root, but at least slow champions, you'll still have a much greater chance to land E or position for your Ultimate. Standard E first. E, R, Everfrost. Once you land E, press R and start the windup. Then, aiming to CC chain them, use Everfrost active. This is best when you can't land an empowered E, since the route won't be long enough for enemies to say CC long enough while your ultimate winds up. Therefore, we'll be using the Everfrost active to keep them CC'd longer, ensuring you land that important ultimate. Gale Force. Similar to Rocket Belt when you're playing AD Nico, you want to use this active for a few different reasons. The first is to simply use the damage to finish off low HP enemies, as the active deals increased damage to enemies below 50% HP. Secondly, it has great defensive use, as you can use it to dash to either dodge an enemy ability or get away. A final use is to close distance to land E, so the combo would be Gale Force then E. Considering your AD on Hit Nico, you'll be aiming to output damage through auto attacks rather than abilities. Lichbane Combo Although it's a niche item, it's worth mentioning. There's no real unique combo with Lichbane, but ideally you want to proc this at least once, which is easy, or two or more times in longer combos and extended fights. By the way, you can actually get a Lichbane proc from W, which is surprisingly quite useful. Here's a combo to get two Lichbane procs. E, R, auto attack, Q, 
Q, auto attack, W, auto attack. You'll get at least one empowered auto attack as well. The W here is simply used to trigger the Lichbane proc. It will be best to get an empowered E for the higher CC duration, but that won't always be possible. Double or more item combos. Everfrost plus Zonyas. Press Everfrost, then Zonyas. Since the Everfrost active takes time to cast and has a travel time, you can use this anytime you're in a threatening position, perhaps after you have altered and are surrounded by multiple enemies. Hopefully it can help your team capitalize on the rooted or slowed enemy while you're safe in Zonyas. Niche combo. Although you really want to take Hex Flash with Nico, there's a strategy to charge Hex Flash while channeling your ultimate. Press ultimate, then immediately start charging your Hex Flash. You only have one second before you release Hex Flash, so you won't cover that much distance. This is probably only specifically useful for support Nico bot lane, as you'll be focused on a utility based playstyle. Another combo you can perform is Hex Flash, then E. Again, best used in areas where enemies lack vision, like in brushes and over walls. The hex gates are a way to travel while channeling and activating your ultimate, but they require extreme timing and placement. The ultimate will land about halfway after you've clicked the portals. Good luck. Now let's cover some mechanics specifically to Nico's kit. This won't exactly be breakthrough information, but these small tips might just give you the edge you need to outplay your opponents. A passive. In order to fully understand this disguise mechanic, it's important to understand the enemy's perspective, seeing what they see when you play Nico. Anytime you play against a Nico yourself, especially a skilled Nico, pay attention to how they use this ability and notice how effective they are at deceiving. You're able to keybind your passive in the menu, so you can quickly change into any of your allies or back to Nico. This will make it slightly quicker to change in clutch moments, instead of using your mouse to click the champion portrait. I'd only commit to this if you're already experienced with Nico and you're thinking about becoming a Nico main, as you'll need 5 keys for this and can already be overwhelming considering all the other keys you need to think about. Transforming into a champion with a faster space movement speed can help you get to lane and around the map slightly faster. Here is a list of champions with faster movement speed than Nico. No need to remember this, but once you start seeing a few of these in your games, you won't have to waste time on testing them. Of course, if you're just starting out, remember to test it right at the start of the game by transforming into every ally champion until you see the fastest movement speed. When you break your disguise by using a spell, you'll put this passive on a 25 to 10 second cooldown. However, sometimes you can tell enemies know it's you. Instead of breaking the disguise and putting it on cooldown, simply transform back to Nico, saving you that cooldown, just in case you need it again soon. Nico is able to stay huge if she transforms into an ally that has been altered by Lulu. You'll stay like that indefinitely while transformed. Tower shots will not break your disguise. Most players aren't aware that Nico can take tower shots without revealing your disguise, so you can actually use this to fool them into thinking you're the real champion. Best use when it's safe and you're close to or full HP. The transform bar can be a little inconvenient at times as it covers some information like room cooldowns. Make sure you kind of keep track of your own cooldowns as the information will be covered. A Q. Spell shields only block one instance of damage, so enemies can still take damage from one or two procs, so Q is generally useful to remove or bait spell shields, and you might still get some damage off. But it's not just about landing this ability that you should be thinking about, but also how the enemy will move after they take damage from the initial Q proc. If it's a fleeing enemy, you want to make sure you throw it so they walk into the AoE, hopefully taking one or two extra procs of damage. Even if you've rooted them, this should still be kept in mind, as when they attempt to run after the route, you'll want to make sure they take one or two more procs. Maximize the range of Q against enemies with range. Use the outer edge of Q to gain slightly more distance, saving you from getting closer to the enemy. This will be harder to aim and easier for enemies to escape your Q AoE, but it will be much safer against certain long range threats. Quick wave clear tip, at max Q rank, remember to auto one minion in the backline, then Q. Basically, you should have enough damage for the first Q proc kills at least one, and then it can proc again to kill the rest. This can also depend on how much AP you have and the time of the game. Sometimes you want to wave clear, but minions are close to full HP. If an enemy champion is close, just use them to get some extra procs. This is also useful to thin out the wave anytime you're laning and notice your wave stacking up. Although the AoE is small, you should always try to aim for multiple enemies when possible. It can increase your potential to 1v2 or even more. 
Her W. Once activated, you'll be invisible for half a second. You want to use this loss of vision against targeted attacks and abilities, especially in those clutch moments, as cancelling one auto from the enemy can win you a fight. Your clone will draw enemy minion aggro. Remember to use this to tank some damage and even to freeze your lane just outside of your tower, saving you some HP. We mentioned it's great to tank tower shots. Utilize this whenever you're pushing a tower to save your minions from two extra tower shots. And it might just be enough to get that 160 gold tower plate. Your clone can soak up certain runes such as Electrocute and Arcane Comet. Use it whenever you want to bait an enemy into wasting their runes. Although W doesn't cost anything, sometimes just randomly sending it out towards a champion can be a negative, as enemies can use your clones to their advantage. For example, enemies with Fleet Footwork or Grasp will receive a free heal and stack. Other champions may have abilities that heal or shield them. Some champions like Katarina and Yasuo will now have an extra target to dash to. Your clone can see champions who are camouflaged, basically champions who you can't see further away, but they will be revealed when they're up close. This makes it extremely effective not only to brush check, but to scout for camouflage threats, like Twitch and Evelyn, in areas that are simply too dangerous to check otherwise. The clone isn't faster than Nico, but it spawns slightly ahead of you. Therefore, if you use the clone in the same direction as your pathing, smart players will always know the real Nico is the champion slightly behind the clone. This is just to reaffirm that it's almost always best to move in a different direction to your clone. Sudden Impact Rune Mention Although Taste of Blood and Cheap Shot are probably the most favorable runes, your W will proc the Enhanced Damage Penetration from Sudden Impact, making it a viable rune. However, if you've taken this, you'd want to use W first in your combos if you want to optimize damage. You can charge the Empowered Auto Attack on wards and plants, and it won't consume your Empowered Auto Attack. This is an opportunity to charge your W Empowered Auto Attack, so you're ready for the next trade or fight. By the way, while you're transformed, you won't be able to see what stack you are on, as there isn't any animation, nor does it display above your ability bar. However, this can also be used to your advantage, as enemies won't know when you have your third auto proc. You and your clone can move through minions while invisible. This makes it great to escape or retreat after a trade without getting minion blocked, as well as losing minion aggro. For clarity, enemies cannot hit your clone the instant you spawn it, while it's invisible. Therefore, if you want to use it to quickly tank or absorb an ability, you must take into account the half a second of invisibility before. Nico has unique interactions with jungle camps, where her character model will start walking on two legs and waving at the camps as she walks by. Your clone also adopts this interaction. This could be used to deceive the enemy, as players are generally used to seeing Nico's clone running on all fours. The clone cannot be knocked up by players' plants around the jungle, which can be a telltale sign for enemies. Your ultimate is the only active that will force your W clone to disappear early, as it will vanish right as you jump up. Her E. This is a general tip for most skill shots in the game, but you want to throw this out when enemies are going to last hit CS in lane, as they'll be standing still for a split second. Also, walking one direction and aiming this skill shot in another direction is another general tip to help you land the skill shot. Prediction Ease. Without using a target to empower your E skill shot, it's generally easier skill shot for enemies to dodge. Sometimes you'll have to predict or simply guess which way an enemy will move or where they'll be pathing towards. In lane, try to find out which way the enemy sidesteps towards. If they've sidestepped the same way three times in a row, there's a good chance they'll sidestep the same way the fourth time. As mentioned in combos, we can reposition your E with flash. Although simply E flashing straight ahead to close distance is very consistent, any time you have the angle to use one target to empower your E to hit another target, it may just be the playmaking combo you need to lock down an important target or even hit multiple enemies to win a teamfight. At max rank, your E has three seconds of root, which will secure most kills at the stage. This takes practice and careful placement, so only use it if you're confident. As mentioned in abilities, it's great to check brushes or fog of war, as the circle animation will let you know if you've landed the ability. You can tell if you've killed a unit as it will have a different spark animation. This is more useful to check if you've finished off camps in the jungle or enemy minions in fog of war. Perhaps even champion units like Zyra plants or Hyman turrets. Her ultimate. Basically there are two cast bars with this ability. The first is pretty much a special wind up bar to tell you when the actual pop blossom cast will start. The second cast time, this is the time you won't be able to use any of your abilities active items, flash, and some summoner spells. 
you can still use Ignite or Heal. The shield will include clones, so remember to use these when you need to prioritize the defensive shield. Note that the shield is not actually capped versus 5 enemies. If the ability hits additional clones, say a Shaco clone, the ability will grant additional stacks of bonus shield. Remember to use the initial shield to survive any incoming damage, like Ignite or maybe a Karthus ultimate, even when there are no enemies nearby. Stasis for Zonyas will not cancel Pop Blossom. Pop Blossom is the only ability in the game that can start its cast time during Stasis. If you're having trouble deciding when it's best time to activate your ultimate, a good rule of thumb is to keep track of any enemy dashes, blinks, and flashes in fights. Once they've committed, you'll have a much higher chance of landing this ability as they'll lack escapes. If you're turtling to defend your base or there's a massive wave, you can use this for the massive AoE damage, especially when it has a low cooldown later game. Just make sure there aren't any important fights happening soon. Risky plays. Against certain champs with hooks, like Blitz or Pike, you can predict they'll be looking for a hook. Disguise yourself as an ally, start walking towards them, and channel your ultimate. Once Blitz hooks you, hopefully you'll be as close to as many minions as possible. High risk for high reward. Using it over walls. With its rather long radius, anytime enemies are close to walls, it can be a great opportunity to land an ultimate. The range indicator is slightly shorter than the actual area. You can't really aim for this, but be ready as you might catch enemies right at the tip. Nico's kit can seem basic at first glance. However, it's her passive disguise and her W clones that open up a world for creative mind games, separating the good Nico players from the true Nico mains. If you've ever played against a skilled Nico, you know exactly how frustrating it can be to deal with them, as they'll keep you constantly guessing the entire game, and you'll start to doubt whether every champion is Nico or just a clone. Therefore, I've decided to create a section based off these two important abilities, which will give you an edge over your opponents. And a final note before we start, even though these techniques can save you from an almost guaranteed death, anytime you can simply just run away, then that would be the most optimal choice. Before we get started, let's go over something important. Practice the clone's movement. In order to make enemies believe you are the clone, you need to practice moving like a clone. The clone has one very telltale sign. It will always move in one direction, unless of course terrain is in its path, in which case the clone will start to move around the terrain, taking very small sharp turns. Start practicing this unique movement so it becomes muscle memory. Simply send your clone in a straight path with no walls, then start walking into terrain just like a clone would. Also, try not to click too many times when walking straight, as a single movement or sidestep will give you away. A single click towards the wall is best, then start moving around the wall once you start touching it. Sometimes picking the most awkward path straight into a wall is the most effective. A final tip is to not be too delayed with your movement. Since your clone takes off a bit ahead of you, if you take too long to react, you'll start moving a lot slower than your clone, and good players will instantly know that you're the real Nico. Escaping. Best used when the enemy has to pick more than one path. Pick a path in the jungle where the enemy is forced to either go deeper into your jungle or simply back off. This will deter most players from chasing any further. The most common and effective example of this is during laning phase. When you're being ganked, walk towards the tower. Then use your W towards tower and start walking to the side, usually into the river brush or around the river walls. Most enemies instinctively will chase the clone going towards the tower, as this is the panic reaction most have and it's the most obvious path to safety. Brush escapes. Use the brush for even more deception while you're being chased. Once you enter the brush, quickly change direction and send your clone the same way. Since the enemy didn't see you go invisible, they might think it's the real Nico. An important tip that a lot of invisible champs already use for their escapes and general jukes is to be already walking in the direction you want enemies to chase you. Then, once you're invisible, simply change your path. But this time, send your clone the direction you were walking before you went invisible. Baiting. Transform into weak targets and bait greedy enemies to all in you. After they've committed, turn on them and punish their greediness. Pretending to be a Jenna who's out to ward by herself is a common example. Use this technique during roams too. If a jungler sees a low HP Janna in the river, you might just bait them into a fight. Engaging. Use your bait to engage. Cloning yourself into the least threatening champ will allow you to catch enemies by surprise, leading to better engages. Transforming into a Scion that has an ultimate on cooldown is a good example of a low threat from an enemy's perspective, as a lot of players will likely move up to poke or harass. Bluffing. Transform into a strong full HP tank to scare off enemies any time you want to ward or scout enemy territory. Careful if they call your bluff, make sure you have options to get away. Deceiving mind games. 
transform into your jungler early and appear on the opposite side of their jungle. This may confuse the enemy, leaving them unsure on which side your jungler starts, which will relieve some pressure off your team early on. Use your jungler clone to appear on the map every so often, just to keep the enemy guessing throughout the entire game. There may be the slightest chance enemies look at the map and see your jungler icon, which is really just you disguised, and will force an engage in their lane. If your jungler is actually close to those lanes, they can then go to that fight and hopefully turn it around. Unique champion sounds and animations. One really tricky tip if you play with pre-mates, when you transform into an ally, you transform into them and their current state. If it's Dr. Mundo, for example, you may have his flames turning around you if he had his spell activated. Another cool one, if you transform into Vi while she is casting her Q, you will play the sound of her Q charging, which can be a huge baiting tool if you leave a brush. Another example is Shivana's W. If your disguise is Shivana and the real Shivana uses her W spinning fire, the animation will also appear on disguise Nico. Even some random effects like Ramus's Q will throw out some sparks. You will hear the Ramus Q sound, but you won't start rolling like Ramus. It also copies and repeats only the latest attack animation of the one you copy. Copying Samira after she's used a melee hit will make you shoot bullets with a sword. And copying Jin when he's on his fourth shot will make you constantly have your fourth shot. This also applies when the disguised champion uses Oracle Lens. Nico disguised as the champion will have the sweeper animation above, although you won't have the actual effects of the sweeper, just the animation. Recalling animation will be heard if the champion you're disguised as starts recalling. Lane Switcheroo Perhaps when your lane is stale and you have time to make a play, consider lane switching. Pretend to be a top laner or one of your bot lane. Best use when your support is either near base or maybe they decided to roam top when you can make your way bot. Abuse player's muscle memory. You can slowly teach players to ignore your clone if you just keep spamming W towards them multiple times. This will let their guard down and the next time you do it, they may just ignore you, leaving you with a great opportunity to ult multiple enemies. Clone champions. Anytime you have allied champions that have clone abilities, you want to abuse this by turning yourself into a clone. Transforming into Shaker, for example, then pressing W when your Shaker has altered, will create confusion for the enemy team as they'll literally see four Shakers on screen. It will be difficult for them to know which is the real Shaker and which one is Nico. If you use W while transformed as Kha'Zix, it may trick enemies into thinking Kha'Zix has used his ultimate. Any other champions that have invis like Shaker and Vayne will also work. This has a similar effect with camouflage champions, which are basically invisible until you're within a certain distance. Brushes and Fog of War areas to check as clone. Don't just check brushes while in Nico form. Use a vulnerable champ, which baits champions like assassins to possibly use all their ultimate and abilities, baiting important cooldowns. You can then counterattack by turning on them in some cases, especially if they've used important abilities. Since the clone does take off a little bit ahead of you, some players will pick up on this as an obvious sign that it's a clone. Remember to clone ally champions with speed ups to make the clone even more realistic. If people see a Hecram zoom by, it will be harder for them to tell it's a clone, since Hecram is a generally fast champion. Deceive combo, W transform. Stay as Nico, press W, then instantly transform into an ally, and you generally want to keep by the transformations. You want to use this when enemies are bunched up around fog of war and generally around areas they lack vision. Again, this will involve you changing your key bindings to instantly transform instead of having to press the champion icon with your mouse. Basically, the strategy here is to make enemies actually believe the champion in front of you is the real champion because they can clearly see you behind them. Unpredictability. Try different strategies. One game constantly transform, another game rarely transform, then comes one important team fight, transform, and enemies will forget you even have that ability. You'll have a much better chance to catch them off guard, or try both strategies within the same game. Right before or during a team fight, run in and use W clone, and watch enemies run away. Good to clone or even bait abilities if enemies fall for it. You could even do the opposite, where you go in and send your clone the other way. This is best when you have Zonyas, as you could get instantly jumped on. Every game will be different, so thinking of ways to mind boggle your enemies should be high priority. Impersonate champion movements. Try to act like the champion you have copied. For example, Soraka players generally stay further back. If you've transformed into an AD, move side to side and auto attack just like a lot of ADs do. Even spam dancing can make enemies feel like you're the actual champion, as it seems more personal or they'll just be focused on the taunt. So they won't register that you're possibly Nico disguised. For example, Nami players can be known for their dance spam taunt. Force enemy abilities or summoners. 
This technique is similar to bluffing, as you want to aim to become a threatening champion to either force an enemy ability or even their summoner spells. Simply walking up to vulnerable champions as a fed Hecarim can spook enemies and pressure them to waste abilities or flash either in defense or panic mode. The better you become at this, the more you'll find yourself absorbing and baiting important enemy abilities, even ultimates. A small nerf interaction list. We mentioned earlier about certain champion abilities that you can use to further deceive your enemies. However, some will actually give you away. I'll only mention a few visual and sound interactions that you should keep in mind, as they may give you away against players who are paying close attention. You'll pick up on way more interactions as you start experimenting with Nico, but these are a good start. Obvious visuals that give you away. When you turn into Evelyn above level 6, you won't be able to stealth. Jin, your fourth shot bar won't change. Graves, your two shotgun bar won't change. Ergot, knees color won't change. Corky missile won't reload. Misfortune won't proc the love tap passive. Some champions that indirectly nerf your disguised ability. Camille, she may use her passive adaptive defenses to tell if you're the real Nico. For example, if you're transformed as an AD champion, but she sees an AP shield on her passive. Twisted Fate. Anytime TF uses his ultimate, he will cancel your passive disguise and reveal you. Neutrals. Annie. Her passive bar won't change. This can actually be used in your favor, as most players will go aggressive on Annie when she doesn't have any stacks, since she won't have her stun active. If you want players to move away from you, then transform into Annie when she has full stacks. Champions that change forms. With the following three champs, you can only change into one of their forms, regardless of what form they have currently taken. At least, will always take on her human form, so generally players will keep their distance as they are expecting a long-range cocoon. Nidalee will also be in human form. Players may start sidestepping as you approach as they'll be expecting a long-range spear shot. Jace will take on Jace's hammer stance, which is melee range. Before we end this section, I just want to finish off by saying, in order to learn about the mind game potential of Nico, it's not really something technical and easily defined like combos. A combo, as long as you press all the buttons correctly in the correct order, will have the same outcome. However, when it comes to mind games, this will mostly come down to experience, intuition, and of course, the most important variable, real player or players you're up against. These mind games are not something you can simply practice against bots like combos. It takes real game experience against real players in clutch situations to truly outplay opponents. And just because something may have worked on your last 9 opponents, the 10th player may not fall for the same tricks. Some techniques like transforming into low HP champions to bait enemies works exceptionally well against less experienced players, whereas higher elo players will rarely, if ever, fall for the same tricks. I would suggest testing one technique at a time, as trying to use multiple strategies at once can be overwhelming. This section is mostly based on AP Nico. For other lanes and playstyles, check out the other roles section. Early game laning phase. If your team decides to invade, you want to level your E. Nico has amazing invade potential as she can potentially root 5 enemies since most teams are grouped up for invades. Landing that E root will almost guarantee first blood or at least a flush. Leveling E can also become a counter invade tool by stacking your team in a brush against the invading team and again aiming to hit multiple targets with your E. Another very effective strategy for invades is to use your passive and bait enemies. Careful, as you don't want 5 enemies to all jump you, so be aware of how many and what threats are nearby. For example, you can transform into a squishy vulnerable champion like Soraka, have 1 or 2 enemies commit to follow you, then have your 4 teammates in the brush ready to pounce. There is still some flexibility with starting Q for invades, especially if your team already has 2-3 to three hard CCs, as the Q does insane damage at level 1, with 3 ticks of damage, potentially to multiple targets with its AoE. W may be your last ditch effort to survive any time you are caught out, and you'll have a 50-50 chance to juke the enemy. Early Clone Tips You should make use of your cloning passive before you get in lane, to possibly confuse the enemy team as to who they're laning against. Try to be realistic as possible, and pick champs that can possibly play mid lane, for example, if you have an Aurelia or Yasuo top, or also champs that are regularly seen mid. Another useful tactic is appearing as the jungler on the opposite side to give the enemy team a false sense of security, or simply confuse them to which side your jungler started. Remember to check the mind game section for more ideas. Laning phase basics. Once laning phase begins, you'll want to take Q at level 1. This will provide safe poke and wave clear. 
Against many easy and medium lanes, you're able to bully enemies quite hard, especially some melee matchups, if they get tempted to pick up CS. Level 2 is when you become a lane bully in many matchups, and you'll want to level E trying to throw it through minions for extra speed and root time. You want to level W at level 3, which will now have potential to all in many squishies with the extra damage from your third auto proc, anytime you land your EQ combo. Even though your W doesn't have a mana cost, it has a high cooldown and is one of the only escape mechanisms you have, so use it wisely. During laning phase, you might only have enough time to get in one auto during a trade or before an enemy retreats. Therefore, remember to charge your empowered auto on a minion if you plan to trade or anticipate the enemy going in for harass. In harder lanes, you want to focus on safe wave clearing and potentially look for roams anytime you push your wave in. Gank Setup Nico is quite flexible when it comes to the position of the wave. Even if you push an enemy champion under their tower, you can still heavy poke and harass them, and in some cases, you won't even get punished. You can even ping a low enemy champ under their tower, and your jungler may just come in and dive them. However, if you want to encourage your jungler to gank, you want to freeze the lane as close to your tower as possible. Nico's gank setup is effective, but it heavily relies on landing E. Depending on your jungler, once they're ready to gank, decide who will engage first. Do they have guaranteed CC, like a Pantheon click stun target? In which case, wait for them to use their stun, then chain your CC. If not, then it will rely solely on you to land E, ideally an empowered E, and then have them follow up. If you have flash, you should attempt an E-flash combo to exponentially increase your chances, especially if the kill will lead to more control and objectives for your team. Roaming Nico is great at ganking, using your CC from E and ultimate to lock enemies down, allowing you or your laners to finish the job. You are squishy, so you should only travel through river if it's safe enough. Transforming into your jungler is great for bluffing, as when you transform into a high early game threat like Lee Sin, it can force enemies to back off, as well as for ganks, as they might react accordingly to your jungle, for example Elise, they'll be expecting a cocoon, but if you pretend to be a Shyvana level 6, they may have their guard down thinking you're in a mobile target with low threat from range. This will make landing E a little easier as they won't anticipate it and will have to rely solely on reaction. Push mid tower. As much potential as Nico has to roam the map, enemies should never underestimate your potential to take towers extremely fast. There will be instances where your laner will roam before you. When you're unable to follow your laner or your team backs off after you spam ping them, just focus on pushing and damaging towers using your W empowered auto attacks for additional damage. A quick tip to take them out slightly faster is to transform into a melee champ as ranged champions deal around 20% less damage to towers. Two tower plates is worth about a kill in gold and you'll be closer to opening up the map by taking down their mid tower. Be prepared to catch out squishy vulnerable champions who come past through river or jungle on their way back from bot or top lane. Getting the jump on enemies with E or ultimate will almost always result in a kill. Skirmishers. Nico has solid synergy with most junglers as she provides a little bit of everything in order to succeed in 2v2 skirmishes. You should also keep an eye on your jungler if they decide to invade or attempt to take any other objectives around the map. Like a crab, dragon, or rift herald, try to push in your wave so you have priority to join the next fight. Laning goals. Most of the laning phase will revolve around you landing E and generally poking them down with Q. Once you're level 6, anytime you land an empowered E, you have potential to one-shot burst most squishies with a full combo. Remember to force fights around objectives as Nico is incredibly effective in teamfights, especially around early game focused areas like bot and top lane, jungle and the epic monster pits. When enemies are grouped, you'll have the highest potential to ult, stun and damage multiple enemies. If you're in a stale game and you continue safely laning, a good goal for your first back is around 1500 for the Hextech Alternator or 1300 in order to buy Lost Chapter. If you need to back early and want some options, remember to check the build section for all early game item choices. So here are 4 common situations. If you're ahead, look to kill your laner, even some junglers or push your lead by roaming. Force fights with your jungler in skirmishes whenever possible. Push minion waves in so your jungler has priority. Early fights around Dragon and Herald will favor you because it favors your large AoE stun and damage ultimate. If you're behind, safely farm by spamming Q and E, focusing on staying even in CS and close in levels at the minimum. Roam when you can and avoid dying to your laner anymore. Try to stay as patient as possible and be ready to set up if your jungler is ganky. Try to appear off the map and out of vision 
even if you don't intend to roam and abuse your disguise passive to at least have some mental pressure. Applying pressure may help your other laners as the enemy mid will be spamming missing pings, consequently forcing other enemy laners to play passive. These last two conditions assume your team is even in golden levels, so let's cover two more conditions. If you're ahead but your team is behind. Being considered as mainly a mage, you need to focus on bursting the enemy champion that is fed and has a shutdown. Assuming your enemy laner is behind, now it's time to spread your lead to other lanes that are struggling. You're doing plenty of damage at this point, so if possible, do what you can to output damage early so your teammates can pick up some kills on low HP targets. This doesn't mean you should always engage and put yourself at risk, because you're still worth a shutdown, but allowing your teammates, especially late game carries, to pick up some needed gold will give you that late game assurance. If you're behind but your team is ahead, at this point you'll lack damage but your W utility, E root, and ultimate CC is extremely useful. You have peel potential, so find out which of your allies have the best chance of carrying. Use your CC from E and ultimate to keep them safe from any enemies close by. Don't be afraid to die in a fight at this point if it means you can stall time and soak up enemy abilities, allowing your teammates to capitalize and deal more damage. Even simply going into the enemy backline, aiming to stun as many as possible and forcing them to stay back while you W Duke, E Root, and Zonya stall, this will give your carries a chance to output damage without much threat. It's not the damage from your abilities that's important here, but the 3-5 to five seconds of an unkillable threat from the enemy's perspective that will make the difference. Mid game. Mid game is the perfect time for Nico to shine. You usually have 2 to 3 AP items, which is enough to burst most squishies, so be ready to catch out enemies. Making picks with or without your team should be your focus. A single pick can really open up the game, giving your team the advantage to take objectives. You do plenty of consistent damage to epic monsters from your max Q damage and W order procs, so be sure to take these when you can, saving your CC and W active whenever you need to turn and fight. Fights around the river. Jungle and epic monster pits are great for Nico, as already mentioned. Not only are champs grouped up, increasing your chance to damage and CC multiple enemies, there is plenty of brushes and lack of vision for mind games. Diving is an option if your team is ahead, especially if you can land an ultimate on multiple enemies and have Zonyas as a backup. If you're behind, Nico does well to help your team turtle and defend towers with your solid wave clear. Look to punish enemies who try to dive you using your CC, cloning abilities, and Zonyas. Nico really excels when the enemy lacks vision, so upgrading your trinket to oracle lens and buying control wards will passively create pressure for the enemy. I would urge you to close out the game as soon as possible when ahead on Nico, as she'll slowly get outscaled by most majors and ADCs. Side laning and farming. Anytime you are struggling or slightly behind, picking up farm in the side lanes is going to be a reliable way to stay relevant with gold and levels. However, this will put a target on your head forcing one or more enemy champions to deal with you. You'll have the tools to 1v1 many champs, but if you feel you can't or you're outnumbered, you may have to find a way to escape or store for your allies to come and help. Practice and plan areas around the walls to juke. Take advantage of areas like the alcoves, river, or jungle whenever you're looking to farm side lanes. If it's simply not safe to do so, stick to wave clearing duties under your tower. If you don't have TP, you'll most likely want to stay with your team. Split pushing strategy. If you're ahead but your team is behind, Nico does have some potential to split push, and at this point, something like a Nash's Tooth could be a one ticket to a comeback, helping you take towers extremely fast. Attracting one or more champions to come and deal with you may just open up the game, allowing your team to capitalize on objectives, and finally win a fight on their own with a numbers advantage. Remember you're playing assuming your team is behind at this stage, so players like this can give you a decent chance to come back, as it will only get harder from here on out. I would only consider this strategy if you can reliably 1v1 most threats and you will almost certainly lose any fights with your team. Turtling aka Defending Towers Nico is extremely effective at defending towers. Look to punish enemies who try to dive you or your team using your E root and ultimate to CC enemies and peel your teammates. Even using your disguise and W will create mass confusion as enemies are fighting against time while taking tower shots. Couple this store potential with Zonyas and Everfrost and you have the perfect recipe for a comeback, picking up those sweet shutdown bonuses. This is a reminder to play safe in fights where you're the only fed player on your team. As long as you stay alive, you have potential to wave clear and protect towers, stalling the game as long as possible. Vision control and snowballing a lead. Nico really excels when the enemy lacks vision as you can surprise E-Root 
or ultimate wild disguise and abusing your clone for more deception. So upgrading your trinket to oracle lens and buying control wards will passively create pressure for the enemy team. I would urge you to close out the game as soon as possible when ahead on Nico, as your chances to ultimate stun multiple enemies and one shot most champs will slowly decrease once players finish off their guardian angel and Zonya's hourglass. This isn't to say Nico has a weak late game, but because of a snowball potential of constantly forcing fights around an ultimate, it would almost be considered a waste not to finish out games. Play every game out and change your playstyle. Overall, mid game feels very different in every game you play because of the amount of mind game possibilities with a champ like Nico. That's why it's crucial to constantly be thinking and planning the entire game. Don't feel let down if you're behind. Remember, you have potential to stun and damage enemies anytime. One single ultimate can make a huge comeback. Be the engage for your team if you have to. Peel your carries. It's okay to go in and be cannon fodder. Be willing to die if you have to. You'll win so many games by soaking enemy abilities and letting your team capitalize. This is one of the reasons I love playing Nico. Even in an almost lost game, I would constantly see ways to come back with a mind game play and even try to aim for that perfect 5 man stun. Be a time waster and enemies will dread dealing with you. W Duking, E Root, Zonya's ultimate CC and a shield, you have so much potential to store. This technique is really effective in solo queue games and can lead to panic and miscommunication on the enemy team as they won't know whether it's safe to continue trying to kill you or back off because they fear the rest of your team is coming up to follow. As mentioned in early game and this can be even more effective in mid game and that is to try and make a pick using E flash and of course landing the ultimate flash combo. Late game. A lot of mid game applies to late game Nico. however you'll be punished much harder if you ever decide to go all in and mess it up. In saying that, one good ultimate can change an entire team fight and ultimately win you the game. Keep an eye on enemies who have flash or any important abilities on cooldown as you'll have a greater chance to land your abilities. Try to build accordingly, keeping in mind factors like your team comp, enemy team comp, damage output and the runes you've chosen. For example, if your team needs more damage, you want to prioritize high AP items like Horizon Focus or Death Cap, especially if your team has enough CC and tankiness already. Maybe the enemy team is stacking plenty of HP, in which case a demonic embrace is a solid buy. Again, fights around Baron and Elder Dragons are great since the tight areas make it ideal to land your E and ultimate. Be prepared to play to make those E flash and ultimate plays. There will come a time when you have to make a mind game play to seriously outsmart your opponents. This will set yourself apart from other Nico players and I honestly believe it's something you need to practice many times until the juking, deceiving and baiting becomes muscle memory. Being able to constantly have the perspective of what the enemy team sees and is thinking will allow you to abuse this sort of psychological warfare that a champ like Nico possesses. Emergency backdoor strategy. This really makes Nico such a versatile champ. If the chance to backdoor arises and you possibly have TP, be ready to make a play. If enemies have an open base and you are confident they're out of base or at least the main threats aren't around, it's your time to TP in and win the game. With Nasher's Tooth and perhaps a Lich Bane, you'll shred towers. Nico, in terms of damage, scales well into the late game. Don't ever feel like you have to rush to make a desperate play because of scaling, unless of course there's some sort of rare condition when enemies are all stacking MR and you're a full AP comp. Team fighting. This can happen any time from early to late game, and each team fight, even in the same game, can feel completely different depending on the location you fight, your items, enemy items, which ally you're disguised as, how the fight started, etc. Regardless of these variables, you should have an objective in most fights. Let's go over your priorities. Burst Squishies Probably the most important focus with a burst champ like Nico. Bursting an enemy carry, especially before a fight even starts, can easily win the entire fight. Poke Stay back and constantly poke with Q and E and auto attack anything within range. Use your ultimate anytime the enemy engages on you. Crowd Control with abilities and items, you might even find yourself the main crowd control champion on your team, which means your team will rely on you to engage or even disengage. Mind games. Don't ever underestimate the impact a simple mind trick can have on a game. Perhaps transform as your jungler late game and appear bot lane, the furthest away from the Baron. Enemies will think they have a chance to start Baron. Once they start, TP in and go for a 5-man ult in the Baron pit. Peel. You won't always find an easy way through the backline nor will you always be the most fed player. Therefore, peeling is best, so figure out which carries you want to prioritize to protect. Zoning. This relies on specific ally clones, 
but is still an effective way to keep enemies from coming into areas like the Baron and Dragon Pit. For example, transforming into a Malphite, having enemies fear you might ult them. Especially during late game, some champions won't even think about trying to contest or they risk dying before a fight even starts. Stalling. As mentioned a few times, your potential to stall is insane and can be almost impossible for enemies to deal with. As well as your W duking Zonyas and some ally disguises, if you have more heals and shields on your team to rely on, you'll be ridiculously hard to kill. Matchups can be a little subjective since some players find some champions harder than others. Perhaps they have played against a certain champ and are therefore confident in knowing when to go in and when to play safe. I will do my best to be neutral as possible assuming all skill levels are equal and focusing mostly on the champion's kit. I'll be listing champs into easy, medium and hard. Easy matchups are lanes where you can quickly become the lane bully and you mostly outrange these champions with your Q and E. You can abuse certain melee matchups early with your empowered W auto attacks. As long as you consistently land empowered E, using all the tips throughout this guide, you'll instantly dominate these matchups and have high kill pressure so be ready to ignite and go all in as some of these champs need to be punished before they can reach level 6 and scale later on. Medium matchups are usually skill based. You can't just rush into trade unless you have a safe window to do so. Most of these are quite even in terms of range, therefore dodging and landing skill shots will most likely determine the winner. If some of these seem a little harder early on, the more experience you gain playing Nico, then they'll become easier over time. Hard matchups usually involve champions that counter most of your strengths. These factors include, but not limited to, longer range skill shots, high mobility, and high burst. Another key factor is peel, as any time you are charging your ultimate, they can essentially negate all your potential to combo them. If you need extra safety, check out the build section for runes and item tips. TP might be also necessary to ensure you recover from any bad trades early or even an early death. A final point with hard matchups is not to worry too much if your lane doesn't go your way early on. Nico excels in teamfights, especially in objective focused areas, so simply staying even in CS and levels by safely farming with your Q and E will enable you to dominate later on. Solutions will include strategies to play against the specific champion, different rune suggestions, specific item buys, abilities that threaten your survival, and windows when it's best for you to trade or even go all in. Remember there are factors that I won't cover, like your ally or enemy jungler's pressure, going up against smurfs, very unconventional picks, and enemy roams from either top or bot. I will be prioritizing newer players in this section since many of them simply don't know what a champion is capable of, but experienced players can still learn a handful of valuable tips. By quickly covering important enemy abilities, a newer player doesn't need to spend time playing every champion in the game to understand what to watch out for. I will be mainly discussing the matchup throughout laning phase, including pre-6, level 6, and a little post-6. If you need more options to help you with your laning, remember to check the build section as it provides plenty of information on early buys, rune choices, and even summoner spells that can make a huge difference in some of these lanes. Easy lanes, some quick runes and item tips. Since these are generally considered easy lanes, you can look for the most aggressive rune setup and item choice. You won't need to prioritize sustained runes. You can purchase damage focused items over defensive items, unless of course you have a bad start. Ari. Priest 6, her main threat is her E charm, which will be followed up by her Q orb and W3 fireballs for a short hard trade. You can block her charm by starting with W in trades, using your clone to tank her charm. Even if you get hit by the first part of her Q orb, just walk sideways to avoid her second true part damage. Also avoid standing behind minions so she doesn't have the chance to Q you and the minions, so force her to choose. After 6, she's going to be hard to lock down, so your best bet is to catch her out in fog of war around walls, in the jungle, and river with a full combo. Focus on CC chaining combos before she dashes away. Her main threat is that she can set up her jungler with her gap closing dashes and chain CC you. Take Merc Treads if behind to counter some burst and CC from Charm. Annie, look for hard trades anytime her stun is down. Her stun is displayed beneath her health bar at 4 stacks, but watch out at 3 stacks as she can quickly use an ability to proc it. She can burst you at level 6 with a full combo and ignite. If you kill her and Tibbers starts attacking you, you can use W to stall and the movement speed to get away. Merc trades are great to counter her burst and CC. Her flash stun combo is her only threat after 6. Brand. His W AoE skill shot is his main poke damage and it is about the same range as your Q and E. His Q skill shot is his main threat which stuns you when you are already ablaze from his passive. Use your W clone and movement speed to block and dodge these skill shots. 
When his Q is down, go for hard trades and all in. After 6, don't all in unless you are full HP, as his ultimate will bounce up to 3 times onto you, and his damage is extremely high. Merc trades are optional if there's more AP or CC threats. Cassidon, his Q is his only safe poke tool. He gains an AP shield from his Q, so you should always wait until it's down to combo him. If he uses Q on you, force him to miss CS by going aggro on him with auto attacks. His W is an empowered auto, so he'll use it any time you get close, so don't get into melee rage. His E is an AoE in front of him, which reduces in cooldown any time anyone around him has used abilities. Once he's level 6, he's hard to kill and you need to respect him, but you can kill him if you land empowered E, or he, if he ever R's on top of you, then just instantly counter with a full combo. Lux, dodge her Q skill shot either by sidestepping or using your W movement speed. Anytime her Q is down, you are safe to hard trade. Watch out anytime she's low HP, as she may try to bait you with her W shield and especially if she takes barrier. She can choose to play really safe with her E wave clear. Consider roaming, as you have a lot of pressure in river if she decides to leave lane. Merc trades viable if they have a heavy CC team. Malphite, pre-6 is not a kill threat, but he will spam Q poke and it will add up, especially with Arcane Comet. Taking biscuits for HP regen will counter his poke and he'll go oom. Um. Try to consistently poke him, especially with auto attacks while his passive shield is down. It will regen every 10 seconds. As long as you aren't in melee range, he can't use his armor stacking W passive auto attacks and his E ground stomp. Respect his level 6 as he can one shot you if he builds full AP and takes ignite. Malzahar, anytime he E space aids the minions, you can go for a hard trade. When going for a trade, make sure to remove his shield with either Q, poke, or auto attack him first. Make sure to kill his minions to slow down his push. Try to get 2-3 Q procs to clear his voidlings. Although he's not a big threat pre-6, you have to respect his flash R suppress as it may be followed up by a jungler or he can kill you with a full combo if you're around 70% HP and below. Consider to push in waves and roam at this point. You can use your W clone to tank his space aids. This will stop him from pushing and from you taking damage. Banshees is a great defensive option later on in the game, especially if you're a high threat at this point. Pantheon, play very safe and out of his W range, which he will follow up with his combo. Luckily you have plenty of range and can at least get in one auto safely while he's rooted. He will out trade you if you get close with his quick cast Q spear and negate your damage with his E block. Especially watch out when he has 5 stacks under his HP bar as he will amplify his Q, W and E damage and effects. Stick to EQ poke combos. Even at level 6 he can counter your roams with his Starfall ultimate. If you catch him channeling his ultimate for the first 2 seconds, you can interrupt it with your E root. Anytime he star falls onto you, he will be telegraphed on the floor, which means you can time it with your ultimate for a guaranteed stun and even your E. Ping your teammates when he's level 6 if you see him orc out of lane. Ward around the river walls. Sonya's Hourglass is a solid buy later on. Kiara, her level 1 is weak and you should look to abuse her with auto attacks and Q, maybe even starting W. At level 2 onwards, her Q poke spam will add up over time, but you can avoid most of these by standing behind minions, so the range is halved. Respect her engage at level 3 as she has plenty of damage. You can safely trade once she has used at least one of the Qs, although she's quite mobile with W and E dash plus Q brush. Zonya's Hourglass later is a great defensive option. Talon. His level 1 is quite weak as you can abuse him with auto attacks. You can rush level 2 to win a trade. Respect his passive damage, which activates at 3 stacks whenever he hits his Q and 2 parts of his W. He has a huge kill threat at level 2, even if you have about 80% HP. Try to at least dodge the second part of his W by walking back or to the side. You might need W movement speed in some cases. You can poke him down from safe range in the entire laning phase and commit if you have electrocute and empowered auto attacks. At level 6 you both have kill potential, but you'll either need to poke him down or get the jump on him. He becomes more of a threat to your team with his E wall jumping roams. Ward around river and wall, spamping your team when he's out of vision. Keep waves pushed and match his roams when you can. Sonya's hourglass is great to counter him later on. At this point he'll have a hard time killing you. Twisted Fate, his only real threat is his W yellow stun, which can be followed up by his Q and auto attacks for a hard trade. The stun card is also perfect to set up his jungler for a gank. Anytime he uses his W on minions or it times out, you can go for an EQ auto attack combo, abusing your auto attacks as much as possible. After 6, ping his level to your teammates and keep a ward either in lane or behind the river walls so you can see which lane he starts pathing towards so he can ultimate TP as this is his main threat. Look to E root to cancel his ultimate if possible. Consider hard pushing waves so he can't just freely roam. Vladimir, 
If you are planning to go for kills, an ignite will be necessary to reduce this healing as well as damaging him in his W pool. You outrange him with Q and E and can mostly avoid taking his Q and E poke damage. If you are going in for auto attacks, make sure it's W empowered. Especially avoid his empowered Q when his bar under his health bar is full, even if you have to miss a melee or a cast a minion. After level 3, once his Q is down, you can look for hard trades with auto attacks. At level 6, he becomes hard to kill with his sustain from Q healing and W for safety, even if you land E root. Hopefully your support builds Kemptech Putrefire, but if not, you should get Morella Nomicon as your third or fourth item. Zed, stand behind minions to at least avoid taking most of his damage from his Q shurikens. You can try starting W and use your empowered orders to harass him early, as it can't be dodged compared to Q. Just charge two stacks on the minions first. If you have heavy minion aggro, just use W to lose minion aggro. At level 3, you need to respect his W shadow combo, where he can E slash to slow you and follow up with his Q and auto attacks after he dashes onto his shadows, but you can avoid most of this damage with W, making it hard for him to land his abilities, especially his two Qs. Once his shadow is down, you can look for hard trades and auto attacks. Level 6, if he ever ults you first, remember that he will always appear behind you, so you can time your E route for a guaranteed CC and follow up with a full combo or just simply get away with W. Try to have your ultimate covering both sides of his shadow. Even if he returns to a shadow, he will still be in the ultimate circle range. There is a small window for him to dodge your ultimate right before you land, so keep this in mind as you never really want to engage first unless he's hard rooted. Sonya's Hourglass is a solid defensive option later on. Medium matchups. Quick runes and item tips. Since these are generally considered skill based lanes, you can pick depending on your experiences with the enemy laner. If you're confident, pick an aggressive setup. If you're unsure or have struggled with some of these in the past, pick sustained options like Biscuit Delivery from Inspiration or even Resolve Tree. You can purchase damage focused items over defensive items in most cases, unless of course you have a bad start and it's specifically mentioned in the matchup. Akali. She will win trades against you with her Q and auto proc, so respect the Q range. Luckily you outrange her with Q and E, so abuse this distance. If you do get hit by her Q, you can avoid her empowered auto attack by using W invis. Only go for auto attacks once she's rooted, preferably make sure it's empowered. Once her W shroud is down and she is low on energy, that's your window to abuse her. Stay behind minions to avoid her E. She can still travel with her E if you rooted her, but she will have to time it right before your E lands on her. Remember to use your Q and E as it provides vision while she's in her shroud, so you know if you've hit her or not. At level 6 she can dash towards you but she needs to target you. Merc Trades are a great defensive option. Anivia, her only threat is her Q which is a slow moving skill shot that stuns and she follows up with bonus damage from her E and auto attacks. You can easily dodge this with sidesteps and even using W movement speed. Only aim to use auto attacks if her Q is down. She has an egg passive which she revives once she loses all her HP. Let your jungler know and keep a timer when it's down. Simply ping her egg so you have a time for it. It's a 4 minute cooldown. Watch out for any type of egg baits, perhaps under a tower or stalling for her jungler. At level 6, you must respect her W wall push into her R AoE. She will most likely push the wave with her ultimate at this point, which is then best to roam if she chooses to play safe. Her W wall will also be used to push you away anytime you try to ult her, so only ult her if you have flash and her W wall is down. Aurelian Soul. Most Aurelians perma push with W orbs. Care for a slow Q skill shot, which stuns and he will follow up with more damage. Use W movement speed to dodge his Q if necessary, and then counter him by getting close to E root. After level 3, you can look for hard trades by staying really close to him if you want, avoiding getting hit by his orbs. His main threat comes from his roams using his fast traveling E. Try to ward behind river wards and some control wards in the river brushes. Ping teammates anytime he's missing and you predict which lane he's ganking, as most Aurelian mains will gank a few times even before they hit level 6. He can probably kill you with his ultimate combo from around 70% HP, so respect his damage, but try to punish him in the river when you can. Unfortunately, his ultimate counters yours, as it's the perfect pill tool to push you away. Diana. She can outtrade you with her W shield, as it will soak up most of your combo. You'll have to bait her W out if you want to win trades. Her Q poke will chunk you eventually, so avoid being hit as much as possible. If you are hit, stay back, or she'll be able to E dash to you twice. Winning lane won't be easy, so just play patient and aim for safe poke. Diana lacks escape, so try to set up the wave next to your tower and be ready to E-root and ult combo her to set up your jungler. At level 6 she can and will go for a full combo anytime you get hit by a Q, especially if she has a jungler nearby. Echo, you will win trades at level 1, so constantly auto attack him. Most Echoes will just try to push the lave at level 1 with their Q. 
you should easily dodge his slow moving Q and use your W movement speed if you have to. You will win hard trades at level 3 onwards. Avoid allowing him to proc his passive on you which activates after he lands 3 auto attacks or abilities. Take care early on when he moves out of sight as he's likely charging his W AoE stun and slow field. Most echoes will start hard pushing with Q very early and you should use your Q to counter his push. After 6 if you land an empowered route, you have a high chance to kill him, especially if you avoid his telegraphed ultimate damage AoE. Basically stay away from his shadow clone unless you can tank the damage and even ignite him before he uses it to reduce his healing. Merc Shreds are okay to buy if he gets ahead and there are more AP and CC threats. Galio. His W passive and Mars Shield blocks AP damage and you must respect his kit and therefore hold off on auto attacks unless you empowered root him. If you ever get in his W Torn and E dash knockup, you will be CC chained and take a huge chunk of damage. Worse off, he may be setting up for a jungler. You should W movement speed away while he is charging his E dash or channeling his W Torn area, then counter him with your EQ combo. Your best bet is to play safe and keep up in farm in most lanes. Level 6 he will look to roam using his ultimate to enter fights, so ping his level to your teammates and ward the lane or behind the river walls and even ping the lane he starts walking towards. There's a small window to cancel his ultimate with your E root just before he flies up, but you must be close. LeBlanc, play safe before level 3, but you can still go for EQ at max range. Avoid getting hit by her W dash whenever she marks you with Q, and then she'll follow up with the E chain, which you can use your W invis and clo to avoid being hit. Or if the initial chain hits, be ready to counter with your E and auto attacks. She's extremely slippery and is one of the few champs who can easily dodge your abilities, then return and hard harass you, so it might be best to play reactionary against some LeBlanc players. Try to predict she'll return by throwing your Q or E towards her W pad on the floor. At level 6 she can use one of her 3 abilities twice which means she can burst you with a full combo. She struggles to push waves unless she's using her high damaging W ability, in which case you can abuse this as much as possible by hard pushing waves. This strategy doesn't work too well if you don't have jungle pressure and vision control. Merc trades is a defensive option to counter her burst and CC. A quick special interaction you can use her clone for extra shield strength as it counts as another champion, however this is only effective when she's low HP. Orianna, play safe before level 3, avoid being too close for her to Q ball poke you as it will be followed up by her AoE slow W field and her empowered autos from a passive. This will just turn into a poke game and you both have very similar combo and trades. After 3 it's best to bait her Q W poke then go for a trade anytime she wastes it. She can choose to play very safe which makes it hard to get a kill. After level 6 watch out for her E shield and ult pullback bait under tower. Plenty of Orianas take barrier so take that into account. Her ultimate is a great peel tool, keeping you away from her before you land your ultimate but that depends on her accuracy. Look to roam if the lane becomes stale as she can easily just perma push the wave. Silas, his Q has two parts and you should W movement speed away to at least avoid the second higher damage part. His E dash and then chain pull is his main gap close so avoid it at all costs or he'll follow up with his combo. Your W invis is a great way to avoid his W targeted spell. He lacks escape apart from his small E dash over some walls to try to hold your wave close to your tower and be ready to set up for the jungler. At level 6 he can copy your ultimate and hold it for 1 minute and 30 seconds. As you already know your ultimate is amazing for teamfights and it works really well with Silas's kit so this will make him a huge kill threat. The good news is that once he steals your ultimate it will be on cooldown for up to 4 minutes early game. You'll want to take ignite in this matchup for a good chance to kill him. Make sure your support has chemtech putrefier or then you'll want to buy Morella Nomicon later on. Vega. Although he's quite a squishy mobile champ, his E cage when used properly makes it almost impossible to reliably get in an auto attack range after level 3. Go aggressive when his cage is down. Try to bait it out using W movement speed to get away and then follow up with your combo. Avoid taking Q poke damage as he will gain AP. His W is easy to dodge even if you're inside his cage. Anytime you are stunned he will chunk you and watch out when he uses it aggressively to set up for his jungler. At level 6 he has some kill threat if you get poked and anytime you are around 30% HP he will execute you with his ultimate. Merc treads are an option to counter his burst and reduce CC time of his cage and he won't reliably hit his W anymore. Viego, you can abuse him up to level 2 just keep your distance. His Q is short range skill shot and it can go through minion waves. His W is a small dash but it also has a potential medium range stun skill shot depending on the charge up so stay back and even use your W to avoid it. It only hits the first target so you should stay behind minions to avoid his stun. His E will be used on walls around the river anytime he either wants to go aggressive and it might be followed up by a jungler, so play passive until it's down. 
He used camouflage within the mist, which means you can walk up to him and he will be revealed, or even use your W as it will reveal him from very safe range. He is mannerless, so he won't run into any mana problems over long early laning phase, so it's important not to just spam and waste your mana. His level 6 is quite threatening, as it's a small dash and AoE execute, which can kill you anytime you're around 30% HP. Zonyas is a great buy later on to counter his R burst. This can turn into a hard lane if he starts snowballing. Victor, respect his poke, but be ready to counter trade, as you both have similar trade combos. He will likely go Oom if he just spams E, so just play patiently and don't rush to go in for auto attacks. Try to Q and E poke him as much as possible. When going for a trade, save W to avoid being stunned in his W field. Depending on how he places it, you might just need to back out or keep on the attack. He'll hit his first power spike when he upgrades his E to deal extra damage, which is when he's reached 100 passive stacks. This makes it very crucial not to give Victor unnecessary kills as he can snowball. Make sure to avoid the second part of his E laser. As long as he doesn't pick up kills or assist, he'll usually upgrade sometime after level 6. At level 6, he has kill pressure with his burst, but only if he pokes you down. Victor's true strength comes later on when he has all his upgrades and 3 or more completed items. You can use your W clone to lose the aggro of Victor's ultimate. Yasuo. He wins trades hard if he ever gets into melee range, so keep trades quick, ideally next to your tower, and back off with W invis so he can't auto attack or E you. His wind wall will block your Q and E, so try to throw at least one ability at a time, or wait until the wind wall's on cooldown. Stay back and be ready to sidestep when he has his Q tornado ready. Try to poke him to get rid of his shield before an EQ combo. At level 6, avoid getting knocked up with his Q tornado or he'll ult combo you. Respect the jungler if they have a knock up, as he will most likely use them to initiate. You can go for an ult combo if you land an empower E root, but not around minions as you'll have the mobility to get out of range. Azonia's Hourglass is a defensive option later on. Yone. His Q is a short range skill shot, but after he procs it twice either on you or minions, his third Q becomes a long range dash and knockup displayed by a tornado around him, so play safe and back off while it's up. His W AoE shields him, so it's better to combo him when it's down. E dash is his main gap closer, outside of his third Q and procs extra damage when he returns, so he will win trades during this window if he gets into melee range. E has a long cooldown, around 20 seconds early game, so look for trades while it's down. His E is telegraphed and he will always return to the shadow location, therefore you can use this as a chance to land your Q, E root or ultimate. You will become a massive threat when he's level 6. Once he ults, there is a small window to use W movement speed to walk out of range, so be ready. He's pretty squishy and lacks reliable escape without his ultimate so look to catch him out and full combo him. Zonya's is a great option later on. Ziggs, he's all skill shots and mostly outranges you, so dodging is key. His Q bouncing bomb is easier for him to hit when you're next to minions because of the splash damage. He can peel you off with his W satchel jump and creates an AoE area with his E, making it hard to get close to auto attack and even ultimate combo him later on. Look to trade anytime these are down. At level 6 he will most likely perma push waves, so it might be best to just push waves and roam. His ultimate does more damage in the center, so try to at least avoid that main damage using your W movement speed to get out of range. He can't really follow your roams, and if he tries, try to look for him in the river and around the jungle. Merc treads are fine to purchase if the enemy has more AP threats. Zoe, her main threat is her E sleep CC. Once you're hit, she will follow up with her Q poke and empowered auto attacks, which will chunk you for around 50% HP early game. If you get hit by E, use your W just before you get put to sleep to try and soak up her Q damage. Stay away from walls, especially if you don't have vision of her, as walls extend her range of E. She might even be charging up for a long range Q, as it does more damage the longer it travels. Keep an eye on her W spell, which will be displayed next to her HP bar. Careful using your summoner spells, as she may use them against you. Once her E is down, which has around 20 second cooldown early game, you can then play the lane aggressively. At level 6, she has a blink for gap closing, however, she will always return to the initial portal, which means you have a guaranteed Q, E or ultimate. Try to cover both Zoe and her portal within the circle range with your ultimate. She may choose to play really safe by clearing waves, in which case you can look to roam. Merc Treads are a decent defensive option later on, mostly for her burst. These are some of the rare matchups where I would recommend taking Cleanse or TP as a summoner, as you're essentially giving her two ignites if you yourself take ignite. Hard matchups. Quick runes and item tips. Since these are generally considered hard matchups, you should have a goal to stay even in lane so you don't fall off and become a liability for your team. However, if you're confident, don't hesitate to pick aggressive runes. Some champs aren't exactly huge kill threats, they are just hard to kill, so you can still ignore sustain runes. 
If you're unsure or have struggled with some of these in the past, pick sustain options like biscuit delivery from inspiration to ease the laning phase. I would also recommend TP against heavy poke or high threat matchups as it can save you from falling behind. You will most likely prioritize defensive items in most cases, unless of course you get ahead and perhaps your laner isn't an issue after laning phase. Azir, just respect his range early game with his Q poke and W soldiers, staying out of his soldier auto attack range and be ready to return poke with your EQ auto attack combo. Safely farm and keep your distance most of the lane. When he uses Q, it's safe to hard trade and he'll do almost no damage if you stay out of his soldier range. At level six, he can kite and peel you off with his ultimate wall. Just remember not to get baited deep in lane as he may try to sweep you under his tower. You can always decide to play safe, in which case you can look for roams. Without vision control, you must keep your distance as he can easily massive gap close with his E and CC combo you backwards, even into an enemy jungler. Remember tips with W mind games to reduce their chances. Merc trades are optional if the enemy has more AP or CC. Cassiopeia. Avoid her small AoE poison or she will follow up with her E twin fang spam. If she spammed this early, she will go Un, and you should outsustain her. Stick to safe poke most of the laning phase. Her main threat comes from her W Miasma, where a large poison field would slow you and stop you from flashing away, aka being grounded. After level 3, one of the only times to safely trade is when her W Miasma is down using your EQ auto attack combo. You can also trade when she's around 30% mana and below, as she can't spam E early without going Oom. You can potentially flash over the Miasma if you're just outside its range and Cass is on the other side, and you're about to ult combo her. Her level 6 is a threat with her huge AoE stun ult, so be ready to face away when you anticipate it. Her trades are a defensive option. Fizz, you should abuse him as much as possible the first two levels while you have the chance. Aim to beat him level 2 and spam abilities on him. At level 3 it will be close, but you can W and avoid his E jump damage. Best bet is to Q poke and almost only use E when you're at very safe range, or he has already used his E jump. At level 6, if he ever hits his ult shot, he can one-shot you, so it's extremely important you keep your distance. Your ultimate does provide a shield, so it might be necessary to tank some of the damage, so be ready to counter burst him if it lands. It's also incredibly hard to ever go aggressive on Fizz as he can easily dodge all your abilities with his Q dash and E jump. Merchants are a defensive option to help with the burst damage, so consider this if there's more AP or CC threats. An early stopwatch can help you win teamfights, negating his ultimate and E jump damage. You can then build Zonyas later on. Banshees is another defensive option if there's more AP threats. Aurelia, you have a small window at level 1 to get as many free auto attacks as possible, but you must stay away from your low HP minions. She only wins trades if she lands her E, which is telegraphed, and you can use W clone to get away, and she may stun the wrong target, so make sure you save W especially for this. Her E stun has around the same cooldown as your W early on, hers is just under 20 seconds. Once her E is down, you can play aggressively and go for kills if you've landed your E and take ignite. She can all in you at level 6 from 100 to 0. Your best bet is to play safe, poke trades and wait for ganks. The most difficult part about Aurelia is that she becomes very tanky, even if you manage to get a few kills on her. Zonyos is an amazing defense option later on. Katarina, her Q is the only form of poke at level 1 and you should start using her with your range from auto attacks. Aim to beat her to level 2 and spam abilities. Once she's level 2, you almost never want to waste your E, as she can easily dodge this then counter you. Avoid standing next to daggers. This is where most of her damage comes from, along with her auto attacks. Your W is important to retreat anytime she jumps on you, so utilize some strategy in the mind game section to fool her and reduce a lot of her damage potential, sending your clone in the opposite direction and forcing her to guess which is the real Nico. By the way, careful using your clone, as she can use it as an E blink target to her advantage. A lot of her threat comes from her constant roaming. Make sure to ward and ping teammates when you predict her Genki. You can cancel her ultimate with your ultimate stun, but this takes some time to wind up and it's not reliable. Prioritize clearing waves, forcing her to stay mid to clear, or be ready to match her rooms. A small tip is to use your Q on top of yourself when she blinks on top of you, as well as your E, as it'll be much easier once she's in melee range. Lissandra. You should dominate early levels with EQ auto attack combos. Stay far behind minions or to the side of them to avoid her Q poke splash damage. You can interrupt her E with E root, but that depends on Liss timing her E. When her E is down, you can play aggressively. Aftershock Liss is much tankier than Electrocute. She's not much of a threat on her own, but she has amazing CC chain setup for her jungler, and this is amplified when she's level 6 with her stun ultimate. You'll have to utilize the strategies in mind game section to try and juke Liss, hopefully tricking her into ulting the wrong clone. This can become a medium lane if you maintain vision control and there's no threat of ganking jungler, 
However, it can become extremely oppressive if you lack in any of those conditions. Unfortunately, her ult counters your ultimate. That should be completely safe, avoiding both the damage and CC. Best to push waves and roam. Merkshaz is a decent defensive option, as Liss is very CC heavy. Even more important if the enemy has more AP or CC. Banshees may be necessary later on. Lucian. Play safely until level 3. Try not to align with minions and Lucian, or he will Q-poke you from range. Keep your distance as he can dash into auto range and then pre-6 combo you for a huge chunk of damage. Make sure to save your W for any time he dashes towards you, as he won't be able to auto attack or Q you. Even after level 3, it's very risky going for auto attack combos unless he wastes Q and E. Try to poke as much as possible with your E and Q before going in for trades. At level 6, he can kill you with a full channel ultimate. The only time you have a chance to ult him is if he wastes his E dash and you land an empowered E. Rumble. His W shield will block a lot of your poke and the movement speed will make it easy for him to dodge your skill shots. Additionally, he is mana-less, so he'll always be able to use it and he won't face mana issues like you over a longer laning phase. When he is above 50% energy, his Q flames and E harpoons increase in damage, so avoid trading during this window. Only safe time to go aggressive pre-6 is when he hits 100% overheated, then go for E, Q auto attack combos. Even ignite to finish. At level 6, his large AoE field will damage and slow you, which he can use from long range to engage and set up for his jungler, so play extra passive. Save your W movement speed to avoid staying in his AoE. Merkshaz is a defensive option to counter some of his burst. Rise, stay behind minions from his Q poke and stay away from minions if he tags you with his E. He will likely push the wave constantly, but he goes oom pretty early. Focus on farming safely until level 3, looking for EQ safe poke combos. Consider Merkshaz if the enemy team has more CC. Look to roam once he starts perma pushing waves. After 6, he can match your roams easily with his ultimate. You can cancel his ultimate with your ultimate stun. It can be a little difficult to ult, ult combo him, as whenever you're in his W range, he can snare and peel you off. His main threat comes later in the game, when he outscales you, so to reinstate what was mentioned earlier in this guide, try to close games as quick as possible. Syndra, play safe until level 3. Avoid taking her Q poke damage, as she can spam it every 4 seconds on zero ability haste. Her E has a long range stun, and it's a main threat. She'll use it for a big trade, to set up for her jungler, and even peel you off. Therefore, you should only look for hard trades anytime it's down, using your EQ auto attack combo. The only tip to avoid her E is to constantly avoid staying behind her orbs on the floor. So sidestepping is a priority. At level 6, she can burst you at around 80% HP, especially if she stacked her Q balls. You have potential to full combo her anytime you catch her out around walls or in river, but I would only suggest this once you've poked her down to about 60-70% to HP. Merc treads are a great option to reduce damage, CC, and provide movement speed to dodge her skill shots. Velkos, all his abilities are skill shots and he outranges you, so sidestepping and even relying on the W movement speed at some points to dodge skill shots is key to winning. Stay behind or besides minions to block his Q, which shoots two skill shots perpendicular. Save your W to dodge his E knockup. Anytime his E is down, you can go for hard traits if he lets you get close, and you should try to use minions to at least tank his Q damage. Avoid getting 3 stacks from his passive as it deals bonus true damage. Stay back to remove the stacks anytime you have 1 or 2. They time out after 7 seconds. Maintain control in river so he won't be able to leave his lane, otherwise punish him if he does. You can interrupt his ultimate laser with your ultimate stun. Be careful as you might die while winding up. For clarity, he remains still while channeling his R laser, making it easy to land your other abilities. Rocket Belt is amazing to avoid skill shots, especially his E, and get in close to combo him. Merc Trez is a defensive option to reduce damage, CC, and the extra movement speed to help dodging early on. Zerath, he is all skill shots and he outranges you, so dodging is essential to winning lane, and you should always look to counter poke with your EQ. You'll have to become efficient at sidestep duking, aiming to move as randomly as possible to avoid his Q beam and W circle AoE shots, especially in the center as it does extra damage. Stay behind minions so he can't get an E stun on you. Anytime his E is down, it's a good window to look for a hard trade. His passive allows him to gain mana from the next auto attack, and he gets extra mana when he attacks you. Anytime he's oom, he may be tempted to auto attack you, so it might be useful to use it as a chance to e root him. At level 6, his poke potential depends on his accuracy, so be sure to stay healthy. Most Zeraths play very safe, so your best bet is to roam or catch him around the river. Merc Treads is a defensive option to reduce damage, CC, and the movement speed to help dodging. You might even consider this a first buy. So why pick Nico? 
perhaps you're struggling to find reasons to pick Nico over another mage, or maybe you just need a pocket pick for your champion pool. Whether you're looking to try Nico in a normal game or ready to become a full Nico main, let's go through pros and cons you'll want to consider. First, we'll discuss her strengths, basically reasons you want to commit to learning Nico over other champions, and then we'll cover weaknesses, and I'll mention tips to combat those weaknesses. Strengths Burst and Consistent Damage After one or two main items, you can burst most squishy champions. If you're able to kite enemies in fights, the procs from Q and your W empowered auto attacks will output plenty of AoE and single target damage. Positioning will become extremely important, as keeping the fine line between being close enough to auto attack, yet far enough that the enemy struggles to output damage back, can ultimately decide how much damage you deal in a fight. Remember to use this consistent damage to help your team take Barons, Dragons, and even the Rift Herald a lot faster, giving the enemy team very little time to group up and steal those objectives. Crowd Control Your E and Ultimate potentially provide enough CC to stun or snare the entire enemy team. If you've gone with Everfrost, you'll have slows and roots on top of that. In fact, her game-changing Ultimate has insane potential to turn even some of the most lost games around. Remember to use this CC not only to land your important abilities, but also to set up your team, whether it's your jungler for a gank, flanking your laners for a roam, or most importantly, in a team fight, to make sure they are able to capitalize and output all of their abilities. And the potential to peel is also worth noting, especially if you can chain CC everything. Mind games outplay ability. Your passive and W cloning abilities give you endless amounts of ways to deceive, juke, and surprise your enemy. I could even make a whole entire video of how much potential these two abilities have and how every game will open up new ways to outsmart your opponents. If you're ever struggling to outplay, check out the mind game section for tips and ideas. First safe pick. If you play her support, ADC or top, enemies will almost never anticipate it, which means you'll rarely be counterpicked. Even if you find yourself in a hard matchup, you have decent way clear to farm safely. Also, you can always decide with your teammates if you'd like to roll swap or even lane swap. If your teammates get countered, swapping lanes might just make the game a lot easier for you and your laner. Try to be experienced in different roles before you start offering lane swaps. Team Comp Adaptability With most of the reasons already mentioned, Nico can fit in almost any team comp. Not only that, but you can instantly switch from AP or AD, especially if your team consists only of one of those damage types. Playmaking plus extremely fun. Her playstyle is truly unique, especially with her cloning abilities. You have endless possibilities when it comes to juking, so no game will ever feel the same. I've also added as a final point that Nico has an extremely fun playstyle. This isn't really a technical reason to play Nico, but it makes grinding solo queue an amazing adventure, as you'll never get bored, as patience becomes a much needed quality when you're climbing the ladder. Now we'll go over weaknesses, quickly mentioning some solutions. Squishy. Mispositioning at any point will leave you in a vulnerable state. Champions with high burst and especially high mobility can instantly punish you for this and possibly one-shot you. Item like Zonyas and Banshees will help you survive against some of these burst threats and stop certain abilities from catching you out from distance. For specific champions, check out the matchup section. Although you have to get in pretty deep to pull off a solid ultimate combo, the timing is incredibly important. Remember to go over these simple combos until they're muscle memory and your flash timings could be the reason you succeed or fail in 1v1s and teamfights. Skillshot Dependent Being a squishy champ, landing your abilities is key, not only to output the damage and effects, but it gives you that safety of range. Apart from her W auto attack damage, Nico heavily relies on landing skillshots to be effective, as 3 out of your 4 abilities are technically skillshots. Your experience with Nico will determine your success rate at landing these abilities, and will also take time to build that muscle memory. Try to replicate the tips and tricks throughout the ability and combo section, as many of these will increase the chances of you landing important abilities. Look for targets to increase your E speed and width, and don't be afraid to E flash for example if your team is desperate to make a pick and ultimately take objectives to gain a lead. Not only do these combos increase the success of landing skill shots, but make it extremely hard for the enemy to react. No reliable escapes. Your W is your only form of escape, with the movement speed and deception it provides. Duking an enemy can buy you time, but that will depend on how experienced you are with Nico. Practice escaping in lane whenever you get the chance, and master techniques mentioned in the mind games and mechanics section. Not only will this skin of duking players help you trust in your ability to escape, it will separate you from other Nico players. And while we're on the topic of escaping, it's important to know when you have no chance of running. 
Sometimes, once you find yourself in a dangerous position or you've been caught out by some CC, and you'll know from experience, it's simply best to turn and commit to an all-in by unleashing all your cooldowns on the enemy team before you inevitably die. You'll occasionally have moments like this where you're almost certain you'll lose the fight. However, because you were able to unload your entire kit on multiple enemy champions, your team was actually able to turn and collapse to win the fight. Keep some quick combos ready when you need to make these sort of desperate plays. Again, Zonyas and Banshees can be extremely effective when there are certain enemy threats. Falls off late game. It's important to maintain dominance if you pick up kills early, focusing on ending the game as quick as possible, and ideally making plays anytime your ultimate is up. Once Nika reaches late game, most mages and ADCs will outscale you in terms of damage. Not only that, but it becomes increasingly harder to land effective ultimates, as by this time the enemy usually has a few defensive options to counter this. This isn't to say that she doesn't scale, but you just won't have the same opportunities as during the early and mid game. The more experienced you are with Nico, the greater your decision making will be late game, so you can work on making this weakness less of an issue. A smart item purchase, engage, or mind game play can all lead to victories, so constantly think of ways to gain advantages. Avoidable ultimate. The channel time to cast your ultimate will give enemy players enough time to dash or flash out of the way if you aren't already positioned quite close to them. This makes this ability hard to rely upon unless you are sure enemies haven't got flash. There are plenty of combos to increase your ultimate reliability, and you'll simply need to push your limits with a somewhat risky ultimate like Nico's if you want to eventually become consistent in landing multiple enemy ults. Normal games and even bot games are perfect to test your boundaries and get a good feeling for the timing. General tips with AD Nico. Okay, so since most of your damage comes from autos, you'll be using your ultimate mostly for self pill but don't ever hesitate to use it as an engage when you have a chance to make a game-changing play. Although most of this guide is based on AP Nico, most of the information still applies to AD. Most of the combos, mechanics, mind games can all be applied. Since we're maxing W first, remember to use the bonus movement speed from W Empowered Auto to kite, chase, and reposition. So why pick AD Nico over other champions? Her passive and W makes her a flexible pick for her playmaking potential, something rare amongst standard ADCs. The surprise factor, Nico is rarely seen bot or played as an AD champ. This means players really know what to expect and are generally unsure about how much damage you can deal. She has more kill potential early on compared to other ADCs. A simple level two rush into your E Tangle Barb's root and one or two empowered autos can lead to many easy kills early game. Just a reminder, since you aren't building AP, your playstyle needs to adapt. Don't rely on abilities for damage, but rather as a way to help you position and kite your enemies. Adaptability. Sometimes in early champ select, you might decide to go AD Nico, but it just so happened that you have a full AD comp now. Therefore, let your team know that you'll now be going AP, and this will balance out your team comp. You don't have to do this, but generally balancing damage output will increase your chances of winning, and further makes Nico pick extremely flexible. Support exclusive items. In terms of mythics and legendary items for Nico, you can still pick any of the previously mentioned mythics. However, there are two mythics worth mentioning, considering they are up to 700 gold cheaper than the other mythics. Shirelia's Battle Song. It provides all the stats Nico needs, AP, HP, ability haste and mana regen, as well as important active that grants you and your allies bonus movement speed. This is great for utility gameplay, setting yourself up for a dangerous ultimate and your team. Imperial Mandate. Same stats as Shirelia's, but instead has a passive based on dealing extra damage. Anytime you slow or immobilize an enemy, basically land your ultimate, you'll deal extra bonus damage and enemies will be marked. Any allies which then auto attack these marked enemies will proc extra damage. Now in terms of runes, there are three that you can choose to play as support. Electrocute. Take this when you want to dominate and are able to consistently proc the electrocute bonus damage. This is best when you have to dominate early game ADC, who you can follow up, and you should look for kills and aim to snowball your lane. Arcane Comment. Against heavy poke and longer range matchups, you want to stay further back, and therefore Arcane Comment becomes way more reliable compared to Electrocute. Glacial Augment. You probably want to take Everfrost with this rune in order to fully utilize the slow rates from this rune. Anytime you land E or Ultimate, this will activate. Guardian. A tanky rune option. Not really recommended unless your team has plenty of damage. You'll be purely playing for utility, providing CC from your abilities and shields from this rune. General gameplay points and tips for other roles. Support. As support Nico, you want to focus on poking and rooting enemies in lane. 
Enemies will have to respect your E through minions, so pressure them by walking into threatening areas. She has decent AP to poke and great CC to peel, engage, and disengage. Your mindset should be to put as much pressure on enemies so that your AD can farm safely. As you already know, Nico is a flexible champ to play with plenty of outplays and playmaking. The main difference from support and other lanes is that you'll always want to start with Spell Thieves Edge, making sure to poke and harass enemies to upgrade in order to obtain wards, then focus on utility and damage. Compared to other lanes, gold becomes a much more scarce resource, so item purchases must be efficient in order to make this playstyle viable. However, depending on how the game goes, and if your lane starts snowballing, you can always purchase higher priced items. Harass enemies with Q and E as well as auto attacks in order to stack your support item and avoid last hitting minions. Remember to auto attack towers when possible, not only because you take them pretty fast, but also for the stacks for your item. Roaming is an option, especially if your lane is stale. Relentless Hunter will be a great rune to take, especially if you feel like you'll prioritize roaming. Although there's plenty of tips in the mind game section, try to use your clone to appear as your ADC or even your jungler when it's beneficial, as you can seriously bait enemies thinking they've just seen your jungler bot, yet your jungler could actually be top the whole time. It's all about mind games, and especially how it helps your teammates. Get really creative when playing bot lane support. Use those three brushes and alcove area to juke, deceive, and outplay enemies. Keep them guessing, especially if they don't have wards. Use your clone to tank an enemy skill shot for your AD. Use it to check brushes so you or your AD don't have to face check. Once your Frostfang is upgraded into Eye of Frost, pick up the Oracle Lens for Vision Denial. Not only does this denial help you, it's essential to pressure the map with your team. Just like in other lanes, Nico is very squishy, so respect your enemies, especially tank supports with CC, or the lane could quickly snowball against you. Lanes with mobile champions will be challenging, as your E will be harder to land, and their gap closers could leave you in a vulnerable position. AD Generally, ADCs like to focus on farming in order to reach their item power spikes, and that will be part of the goal. With Nico's kit, you can go for way more plays with your E root, something that separates you from other ADCs. In terms of synergy, you want to look for supports that have CC, so you can either set each other up with skill shots or further chain CC them. Tanks are very effective with Nico, as they'll provide peel, allowing you to deal damage safely. You'll want to decide before you finish your mythic whether you need the dash from Gale Force against certain champion threats which is still a rare choice, or you have enough peel on your team where you can safely pick Kraken Slayer prioritizing damage output. Remember to use the tips in the mind games as you can be even more creative in a dual lane. Even pretending to be your jungler coming through lane can be quite effective. Join in as many fights as possible whenever your jungler decides to invade or there's team fights around river. Help take objectives whenever possible. If you're dominating lane with your support early, Remember to take as many tower platings as possible, even before 5 minutes, as bot lane turrets don't have the same fortification buff like mid and top. You'll have the same vulnerabilities as with other roles. Being a squishy champ, you need to respect certain aggressive champions with dashes and any long range supports with skill shots. Just like the support, lanes with mobile champions will be challenging as your E will be harder to land, and their gap closers could leave you in a vulnerable position. You can always start Doran's ring with 2 HP pots if you need the extra sustain, or even consider taking TP as your second summoner if you're clearly not going to be fighting early game. You can even take Ghost as another summoner, which will help you with kiting. You have the advantage, especially after level 6, if the enemy decides to dive you and your support. With W to stall, E root, and ultimate stuns and shields, enemy will have a lot to risk if they try diving you. AP bot carry. Everything in this guide applies to AP bot carry. Top lane. If you've opted to play Nico in the top lane, you can choose any of the builds already mentioned, except for the support build. Ghost, Ignite, and Teleport are the preferred second or summer spells. You want to take Ignite for early game pressure as you have insane level 2 potential. Get a few auto attacks in, rush level 2, land an empowered route, then proceed with more auto attacks and Ignite. As mentioned before, some players are just unaware of Nico's potential, which is something we can abuse. You can even start zoning some champs of CS and even experience by walking behind the minion wave. Just be sure you know where the enemy jungler is or you're confident you can escape a gank. Teleport is the safer option, especially when you might struggle against a matchup. I won't be covering top lane matchups in this guide, but generally you can poke and harass most melee matchups as long as they don't have a huge range dash. Even then you have potential to retreat if you use your W correctly, so remember to practice the tips in the guide to escape those vulnerable situations. TP can also make for some great plays around the map later on. You don't always have to force kills, especially if it means you are overextending and vulnerable to ganks. Simply maintaining pressure and forcing enemies to miss CS is enough. 
you scale amazingly well into mid and late game, so there's no need to risk everything in laning phase. If your lanes are pushing, you should focus on harassing enemies under tower, but again, making sure you're aware of the jungler. Another aim is to auto attack the tower. Being a ranged champion will make this easy and the tower platings will add up over time. Trading in minion waves top will be necessary, but it will cause you to take minion aggro. There are three brushes close to top lane, so remember to utilize these to drop aggro, as well as using a W in this. You have split push potential, as you're able to shred towers with your empowered auto attacks. You can bully a lot of melee matchups and tanks early game since you're ranged, and the W active passive movement speed allows you to kite a lot of top laners, along with landing your E. Enemies will rarely predict a Nico top, therefore, you'll rarely get counterpicked. You'll also be able to pick AP or AD, depending on your team picks in champ select, keeping a balance in your team comp. If you've chosen to play AD on hit, you will shred tanks. Pick Blade of the Ruined King first. There are plenty of other tips throughout this guide that can be used top lane. And finally, the last reason is if you just love playing Nico. Some quick negatives with picking Nico top. Since most tanks are played top, will mean your team may lack a tank. This may be much more punishing lane with hard counters, especially if the enemy jungler decides to camp you. Make sure you have enough experience on Nico first before you attempt to play her top. With AP Nico, you always have the safety of wave clearing from safer range, but this won't be as easy with AD Nico. She's subject to dives. Against tanks and assassin junglers, you will most likely experience getting dove a few times. However, the tips in this guide will help you turn those 1v2s into 1 or 2 kills. Nico may seem like a standard mage, but her cloning ability really separates her from other AP mids. With endless clone and baiting combos and a unique playstyle, she's quickly become one of my favorite mids to play. She can take a little while to get used to, especially considering that most of her damage comes from skill shots. You need to position pretty aggressively when looking to ultimate multiple enemies, which is something mage players aren't used to, so don't be afraid to test your limits when you start playing Nico. Considering she's viable in three other roles, and even has an AD on hit build, you'll never get bored of playing this chameleon trickster. Patches will eventually change some details in this guide, so make sure to check comments, which I'll update whenever a new patch affects Nico. There's been mentions of Nico changes this season, so I'll even release an updated guide. 99% of this guide will still be useful regardless of the changes. Have I missed anything? If so, let me know in the comments below, and I'll add it in the extra info, giving you full credit. This will also help other players who are seeking to improve at Nico. If you've made it this far into the video, here's another reason why Nico is an amazing champion. This isn't really a gameplay advantage, but transforming with your passive will allow you to test any of your ally skins and dance animations. Also, for those who are really committed, I've added one clip in this entire guide that isn't Nico gameplay. Find the timestamp and I'll pin your comment. I'm Zeus, good luck in your ranked games, and I'll see you in the next video.